What's up, everybody? I guess we're live here. We're here. Our we did a show coverage for Sony's press conference at Paris Games Week. That's, That's right. the first time they're holding a conference. We so. are coming to you live from Paris, France, yep. and not our studio in San Francisco. Definitely. Not at all. You know, they call San Francisco the Paris of the West. So, <laughs> close enough. I'm David Hatfield. I'm joined by Max Scoville, Brian Altano. What's up? Uh, yeah, Sony's first ever Paris Games Week conference. Maybe they have something important to say. This is mm -hmm. interesting. They skipped Gamescom for skipped was that their all together? first time ever doing that? Or I'm not sure if it was. Uh, they usually have a conference at Gamescom. They were noticeably so. absent this yeah. year, so this they is. Let, they might Microsoft have the stage themselves. There, yep. So. Yeah. Uh, well, let's talk about some things we expect to see today. First, maybe we'll recap Sony's last four months since E3, since they last had all of our attention. At E3, their big reveal was the Last Guardian. One of their big reveals. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah that's how they started their show. I mean, mm -hmm. there have been Guardian. years of speculation. Was it canceled? Was it not canceled? Yeah, there was just waiting around seven years for that, and that was a, that was a, a big, big, pretty reveal. They showed us signs of life, um, an actual, actual bird dog doing some stuff, dogging around, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know. We don't we don't know when this is coming out. This is this is a 2016 release. That's presumably. what they said that's so far. Saying? Which was kind of like it was like, hey, we haven't seen you for a while. Here's this thing, uh, and we're not going to see you for a while now. Like they kind of, I, I, it, it didn't really. It looks gorgeous. I'm incredibly excited for this game. It didn't really give me. It sort of gave me that repeat of, wait, where are you going? You're leaving again. Mm -hmm. You're leaving for a while. Mm. Well, so, then again, they haven't also said much since then. Yeah. You know, they had a, they had sort of a like a weird augmented reality bird dog thing at TGS, but mm -hmm. no like proper announcement of this. Uh, I this seems to me like the kind of game you can't show too much of, otherwise it kind of spoils some of the magic. Uh, so sure. I'm curious if they're going to be showing more of it or if they're going to be talking about it at all. Maybe they'll have a release date? Like, that could be a pretty pretty that solid commitment. Very significant. That yeah. would be huge. Yeah, they haven't been able to commit to anything like that <laughs> in the last 10 years. So that's that, that would be a big deal. Um, I, I feel like this this is part of that uh, that trio of games that we kind of got a glimpse of at E3 that were sort of the big fan favorites that uh, we we haven't heard anything about since, really. I mean, we heard some details here and there about the Final Fantasy VII remake and stuff like that. But for the most part, they were sort of like, they started off very nostalgia heavy and very big and very hard on, on Shenmue. We had Last Guardian and we had Final Fantasy VII mm -hmm. and then they all kind of hid for a while. So um, today could be the day. So you mentioned this, this trinity or trilogy uh, Trinity. You can call it a trinity. Uh, uh, of the games. Triforce. Yeah, the tri Sony's Triforce. Uh, Last Guardian, then Final Fantasy VII yep. Remake, and Shenmue Three. So yeah. the other one you're referring yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake and Shenmue, I wouldn't expect to hear much, of it, if anything, of today. So Final Fantasy VII, I doubt we're going to see anything for. Maybe, maybe some like, oh hey, we put out a nicer version of like they just recently put that out on iOS with with a version that allows you to skip some of the kind of the grinding stuff and yeah. some right. of the more uh, you know time intensive parts of that game. Wouldn't be crazy if they put that on a PS4 and Vita. That'd be kind of cool, actually. Uh, you never know. Uh, just to kind of keep people excited about it. Yeah. Shenmue 3, on the other hand, I don't think we're going to see anything for that. But uh, I did see something online this morning about uh, somebody talking about remastering 1 and 2 of Shenmue, which would mm. make a lot of sense because yeah. presumably a lot of people haven't played that. Who, yeah. You know, they might want to generate some hype for a new one. Yeah. I don't know. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the third one's coming out. Sort of uh, wet people's appetites for that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's a good it's a good crash course too for anybody who didn't grow up with those games. You probably watched that portion of the conference, being like, "Wait, what?" Like yeah. it's been so yeah. long since Shenmue two, and it's also they had nothing to show aside from a logo because it's a Kickstarter campaign, which presumably hadn't even begun development yet or yeah. had been a little bit in, and they sort of needed a nudge to move along. So, yeah, yeah. I, I would I'm, I'm interested in 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 where they head with that because that's what I really appreciate about what Sony's doing right now is that they they are focusing on giant games and small and small games at the same time. It's not just a triple A blanket of things. So you have weird, quirky Japanese Kickstarter games. You have a Final Fantasy uh, VII remake, and then you have The Last Guardian, which is probably going to be one of the biggest games of the year. So. Viewers, if you have uh, particular games you'd like to see, or uh, if you have uh, predictions for what Sony's going to announce, just tweet them at me, at Dame Zero, and we'll try to share them with you here on the show. Yep. Now, Sony has aligned itself very closely with uh, Star Wars Battlefront's marketing. Mm -hmm. And that's out in less than a month. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of crazy. I feel like they haven't done a lot of marketing I know, Star Wars yeah. related it's this really year. It's time to start Kind of a stealth, stealth launch, I'd say, <laughs> it's almost. Um, it's a small independent franchise. It needs yeah. some help getting off the ground. So <laughs> head on over to Kickstarter to help your local Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, Battlefront, we saw the beta. That was awesome. Yeah. Nine mm -hmm. million people played that. I bet you they're going to say that on the screen. They're going to be like, nine million people have played this beta. 
that would yeah. be one of those things yeah. that would kind of you know help. I was actually wondering that. about that in general. How many sort of pie charts and graphs we're going to see this time? They just showed I, a pie chart in the top of the screen. That was there. a pie chart. That yeah. was a, that's a radar actually. Uh, they they a lot of video game companies have kind of pulled away from the press conferences where they brag about how well they're doing. Um, most yeah. of them haven't really had a lot of great things to brag about, but Sony really does, and the nine million people playing Battlefront before it was even out. Yeah. It's a huge number. That got me hooked on it. That's it a got hot me, metric. It's a hot metric. That got me, uh, I bought the season pass immediately, as soon as so, I could. That's been a big bone of contention for a lot of people, because the season pass, does, we don't actually know what is in that, really. Yeah. Uh, the Force Awakens is right around the corner. I would be really surprised if there was not some Force Awakens stuff included in the season pass that they can't quite talk about just yet. Uh, maybe if they teased a little bit of that, like it might seem premature to tease DLC, but Battlefront is coming out in just a few weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and the movie's coming out in just a couple months, and people are really hyped about it, so it would make a lot of sense to be like, hey, that season pass you're all mad about, yeah. here's maybe a reason that you should care about it. This is kind of an odd time for a conference, though, because it, we are so close to, like, the big holiday games are starting to come out. And yeah. uh, PSX, PlayStation Experience, is yeah. going to be like a month after this. Right. So. Yeah, that seems like more of a fan thing. I feel like this is kind of really the last chance to get in a solid word about, you know, what's yeah. coming in the next six months, maybe? Sure. Yeah, I have a feeling that anything that's playable in Paris today will be playable at PSX. So that's pretty cool that the press will get to try it and then the general audience will get to try it, too. What about that Horizon Zero Dawn? From Gorilla awesome, Games. Awesome looking game. Yeah, another one Very that, was, that was revealed at E3, yeah. and I think it's been quiet since then. Mm -hmm. You know why I'm excited about this game? Mm. It's single player. <laughs> yeah. And that's well, it. as far as you know. And no, that's oh, all they've said so far. Yeah, yeah. they've said it's single player, they're focusing on the story and the single player campaign, and that's about it. And Yeah, maybe they'll shove some multiplayer in at the zero hour, but or zero dawn or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, Paris Games Week, being in France, I think uh, maybe some European developers would yep. want to take the stage, and I think uh, Gorilla is in uh, Copenhagen. Yep. So Yeah, they've got, I think they've got Couple, couple studios scattered studios, around yeah. Europe, but that's uh, that seems like a safe bet. Uh, we don't really have a window for this, do we? Like, did they say 2016, or are they just kind of completely vague about it? Yeah, they were pretty vague about it. Yeah, it seems like a pretty massive game, and I'm, I mean, as we're kind of jumping into a new console generation, obviously the development times, they kind of scale, you know? Like, as we look at all those leaves, they have to make those, you know? It's, it takes longer to make the game, so, like, I think at this point, kind of figuring out how long of a tail marketing has for a game is really key. Uh, Fallout 4 wowed everybody by being like, hey, this is coming out real soon. If we find out this is a 2017 game, I think a lot of people are kind of going to stop caring for a minute just mm -hmm. so that expectations don't run too high. Mm -hmm. But if this is a 2016 game and they show off some more of it and give us some more details, that's uh, that would be that'd be pretty cool. I'm just really, really excited to see them working on something other than Killzone. Yeah. Which was like... I feel like it was a it was a good sort of flagship first person shooter title for a while where everybody felt like they needed to have one of those. And this is trying so many new different things. I love that moment of just pulling out of the cutscene into the gameplay and just That's always nice. giving it to you. Also, do you see that? Do you see that one thing? It's color. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> you, it's see crazy. Colors. Yeah. Uh, no, this is this looks really Welcome good. Welcome back, colors. Yeah. yeah. This is. I mean, I. Also, it's a, something new. We don't know what yeah. this is. You know, it's a kind of yeah. It's a new franchise, yeah. which is just really awesome. It's not you know the fourth or fifth Killzone game, um, and you fight dinosaur robots, which is like that's pretty much when you were a kid and you're like, what's the perfect yeah. video game? Yeah. That's that's something you would mm -hmm. you would draw on your notepad. Uh, and then there's also, of course, Uncharted Four. Yeah, which is out in March. Uh, some people think maybe a multiplayer reveal playable is, today for the first time in uh, Paris. Oh wow! Yeah, what the game is playable? Yes. Okay. Oh, interesting. Uh, I think multiplayer makes a ton of sense because they just launched the Nathan, Nathan, uh, Nathan Drake collection, which mm -hmm. comes with access to the beta for the Uncharted 4 multiplayer. Mm. Yep. Um, people were mad that the multiplayer wasn't included with the Nathan Drake, Drake collection. I can't say that, apparently. Uh, the, but nation Drake. Nation, the Nation Drake. The Nation collection. of Drake, yes. Um, hotline bling. Uh, but the it makes a ton of sense to be like, hey, here's what you get if you go out and buy that thing that we just put out a month or so ago. Mm. Um, you know, get people excited about it. Maybe having it playable on the show floor. Because having, like, I mean, just kind of being to as many trade shows as, as we have, I there's something to be said for having, like, a single-player demo and having, you know, ten different stations that are showing it off. Yep. Uh, and having people kind of shuffle in and play the same, like, ten-minute chunk of a game. It's kind of, I feel like, more exciting to have a bunch of people playing multiplayer. Like, it just it just seems more of, like, a, a social, yeah. you know, you get, you get people excited playing. like It's basically a LAN party that you, yeah. you throw people at. So having, you know, having Uncharted 4 up there and having everyone run around and shoot each other could be... Yeah, I think I, I agree with you. I think that's mouth. more likely than seeing another single player section. So far, we saw that um, we saw that big jungle section reveal that the first time we ever saw it, Nathan Drake fell through the ground. We'll let we'll <laughs> let that fly. It's an ambitious game. <laughs> mm -hmm. We saw this town area or this. Oh, like, this is so good. Which is just so this cool. Moment, 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then we saw that that street chase scene, which was basically mm-hmm. this whole downhill jam the through this tank and, crazy ad, mm-hmm. and which ended in that riverboat ride. And yeah, it was really fun. Um, so a lot of that is, I mean, all of that has been single player so far. So uh, I, I would I would say mm-hmm. multiplayer is a good guess. Yeah. And again, I mean, this the timing of this conference is really interesting because kind of I feel like this this next kind of spring, this next first first two quarters of, of 2016, are, are, there's a lot of games coming out. It's kind yeah. of holiday season two, and we've seen this as an increasing trend the past few years, but this year is like really kind of like, let's not ship a bunch of broken games, let's push those and finish them and have those out, but like, how do you build up that kind of like, that hype? You know, mm-hmm. you know traditionally it was like E3 when things were announced, and then fall was when they came out, and yeah. here we've got a, 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 mid, a mid-fall conference, you know, what are they building hype for? So being like, yeah. hey, Uncharted 4 multiplayer, Go buy this thing and you get the beta. You know, a Battlefront, Battlefront's coming out. Go get this and you get access to this DLC when it comes out. You know, it's kind of we're teasing the sort of the the next sort of yeah. little chunk that comes along. Yeah, yeah, you're right in that we don't like the timing is weird. But now there are like 30 video game conferences a year now, so mm-hmm. it's like we always think about holiday season as the big time to play games. But it, maybe it isn't anymore. Maybe just the whole year is awesome now, yeah. which is like a really good problem to have. I long for those times when, you know, in, in our industry and in game media, the summer used to be the slow time. Yeah, it was quiet. That's, doesn't that sound nice? It doesn't happen anymore. Having a slow time, we now just It does not happen anymore. Time. I'll say I feel less guilty playing games in like February than I do in August. You know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm like, oh, daylight. It's, <sighs> no, it's cold, it's wet outside. Yeah. It's gross. <laughs> uh, what about PlayStation VR? Yeah. They recently changed mm-hmm. the name from Morpheus mm-hmm. to VR. Uh, this is, I believe, a consumer show. You think we're going to see any, any new announcements? Any I new saw games? Sony was sending uh, v- these really cool little VR trophies. Did you guys see those? Mm. To people, to developers working on the mm. early VR oh. games. They're basically just a, a full gold VR kit that was just sitting on a little a stand. So they're happening. They're coming. Uh, I, I'm, I'm still sort of like mixed on the impact it'll have, especially once we started hearing the price. Um, we did see there was a leak for the price the other day, which was five hundred dollars, which could have been just Holy one of those. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. But that's the thing: you want to escape into a beautifully realized three D world in your mind. It's going to cost you. I mean, like, yeah, they you know? did say there, it will be priced as a new gaming platform. Yeah, so we don't know if that if that price was was one hundred percent accurate or not. But I would say that you will not. You will probably not get this thing for any less than three hundred dollars. Even that, that would, would be, be a steal. A huge surprise if that was the case. Yeah. I mean that's the thing is we got the we got the PS4 at, at kind of a steal. It was it's already got a price drop. Um, yeah, recently dropped to 349. Also, like yeah. look at the price of a TV. If this is a replacement for a TV, if you have if they have that kind of that virtual screen environment type of thing, like oh hey, you want to pretend you're playing, you know, playing a video game on a flat screen TV that's projected on the side of the moon or whatever. Right. Like you can do that, uh, which is a good solution for people in dorm rooms or offices or maybe on airplane flights that mm-hmm. haven't have AC adapters. Um, that could be a cool way of, of pushing it. But like I think that being like hey. Here's a thing that just is for playing VR games. That's a pretty big nail in the coffin for it. Yeah. But yeah, next year is the year of VR, whether or not we want yep. it to be. Like the Oculus Rift is coming out. We know this is supposed to be coming out sometime in the first half of the year. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we're going to get pricing and release date just yet. But I think if they don't say something, it's going to be really bad for sort of morale. So we're, we're essentially getting a new console launch window next year for a whole bunch of new th- platforms that are launching with new exclusive games. So it's going to come down to which ones have the best games, as it always does. Um, although the PS4 is doing pretty well for itself, despite having launched with just pretty much knack and a couple of third-party games. Resogun. <clears throat> By the way, Mark Cerny is uh, in Paris right now, so knack 2. Knack 2. Might be happening. Electric Boogaloo. Too knack, too cool. Um, so I think VR is really going to come, come down to price. Uh, it's going to come down to launch games, and it's going to come down to whether or not what it works with. And if if Sony VR only works with PS4, and that's basically your your ticket in, um, that's going to bump up the price a lot, as opposed to having something that just works with your phone or your your laptop or mm-hmm. something like that. Our viewer Stephen the Second asks, "What do you think of the thought that No Man's Sky might be a launch game for PlayStation VR?" Yeah, I mean, I I totally believe it. We haven't seen we we see that game in chunks. There was that 15 minute demo that was on. What was that on Fallon recently? Yeah, that was a that was a that was sort of just like, hey guys, like if you have any doubts about this game, here's how it works start to finish, mm-hmm. and it, it turned a lot of the haters around. That would lend some credence to that. I feel like yeah. just kind of like we've seen it. Uh, has it been almost two years since that was shown off the first time? Or I it, think so. Yeah, it's it, been a long it's time. Been a, it's been a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like if they were like, hey. Here it is in VR, and that would be enough to get people excited about it right. again. There was a rumor this week that it was going to be a surprise launch. They shot week. that down, though. Yeah. They Hello did Games say that. They did shoot that down, but... Uh, <laughs> 
uh, Mi Minecraft uh, Episode 2 for the Telltale Games one. That that had a stealth launch today, I think, if you're <laughs> yeah. curious about yeah. that. So maybe they were like, just we're, got a mix-up. Like, with, with digital distribution, it's so funny that somebody can be like, yeah, that game's out. <laughs> just go get, get it if you want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so No Man's Sky looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm really, really into it. I don't know if I'm into playing it for 100 hours in, in a headset. Yeah. Uh, I, if I'll put it this way, I want that game. I don't want VR to hold that game back. Mm. Uh, if that's even remotely what's happening right well, now, then oh. the VR people can wait because well, I, well I want it first. Mm. Now, Assassin's Creed Syndicate just came out. Uh, we know Jack the Ripper downloadable content yep. is coming. Uh, would this event be a good time to show us a little bit of that? Yeah, totally. I mean, that makes a ton of sense, right? Like tying into what I was saying about the just sort of here's something that's out now. You can go get this thing too. It's like right. I know a lot of people. I don't. I don't know what people think of Assassin's Creed because a lot of people play it and everyone likes different things about it. This, this one's people really like this one. People really like this one, but sort of anecdotally, this feels like there's the least sort of real hurrah around it. Um, I think that you do reach a certain level of franchise fatigue. And I remember last year, was it last year with the with the Mad King George stuff, or was that two? Assassin's that was Creed? Assassin's Creed three. So um, yeah. So I mean, stuff like that was. We heard about that within a few days of the game launch. I don't think like they just launched this beautiful. Great game, it's getting great reviews. I don't think we need to see story DLC immediately. I mean, the game's been out for three days. So like, I, would, I would look at it this way. A lot of people said that the new one is very, like, very very fun, very charming, kind of, like, not not upbeat per se, but, like, it it's definitely more kind of uh, Dickensian and sort of silly than it is, hmm. like, dark and brooding yeah, like this appears yeah, to be. Funny. This would be a good way of getting the attention of people who think that the new one isn't you know, gritty enough. Mm -hmm. This looks very gritty. This looks like totally, in, just completely removed. If you didn't tell me this was Assassin's Creed DLC, I'd be like, New Jack what is Ripper that? You know? yeah. yeah, I mean, it looks like Bloodborne, so. Speaking of which. Yeah, what about Bloodborne? You know, that has uh, downloadable content coming as well. Mm -hmm. That's and, right, and a, and a Game of the Year edition mm -hmm. with a really gorgeous box art. Uh, there's new weapons coming. Yeah, the Game of the Year edition, I think, is only announced for Europe. Really? Now. Yeah. Well, that's a curse word I almost <laughs> said. <laughs> What's up with that? That's not fair. Yeah, yeah. we'll get it. Calm down. Know, it's okay. Right, fine, you already have the regular. I already game. have it. Just I just want expansion. other people to experience it. Yeah. It's well, I like, think that they will. It's, this is a really this is a really smart time for that. You yeah. Know? This is a time when a lot of people are gonna be paying attention to to against what. I mean, like <clears throat> Bloodborne. Or six fingers. Look at that hand. hand. That's so creepy. That's a creepy hand. You just want to hit it with your big sickle. And yeah. <laughs> you can shoot <laughs> with a bow and arrow now. <laughs> and um, run back and hit it again. <laughs> But yeah, like, th this kind of skipped, uh, this was already out when uh, E3 happened. You yeah. Know? That's when a lot of people are getting really, really stoked and, and really just excited about <laughs> games. And this seems like a good opportunity to be like, hey, remember that game that maybe you played? Well, everyone really liked it. So if you didn't get a chance to play it, now you can play it. And there's new stuff that you haven't played. So mm -hmm. get on this big, scary blood train. God, I love this game. It's so gorgeous and beautiful and disturbing. Th look at that. Look at that thing. <laughs> A fun fact about this game is everything in this game could give you tetanus. That's true. Yeah. That's true. There's, very, a, there's a rat in, in a Those sewer. Banisters. Real bad banisters. The yeah. big pig. Awful. Just, just dreadful. All right, one of our viewers, Nico, points out that developer Quantic Dream, developer of Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, yep. is based in France. Yeah. Uh, we know that they have uh, versions of Beyond Two Souls and Heavy Rain coming for PS4. Yes. Maybe we'll get a release date for that, or maybe they have something new to show Didn't us. we get a leaked photo from the show floor of a Heavy Rain kiosks? Yeah. So, yeah. so Heavy Rain's playable there. Yeah. Heavy Rain is also playable on your PS3 <laughs> five years ago. Yeah, well... Uh, <laughs> it's a weird game to sort of revisit. Do you guys play... Did you play Heavy Rain? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I pressed, I pressed X I to Jason played, a couple yeah. times. Yeah, first couple hours. So I actually... Tried, this is Heavy Rain. I actually really enjoyed it, but it was sort of at the apex of... Uh, QTE games, and I think that we've kind of pulled away from those things. And it's also, there's a lot of, well, really? I mean, yeah, in games that are just definitively about QTEs. Okay. Yeah. See, I completely disagree. I think we've, I think that, I don't want to say it was ahead of its time, but I think that uh, since then we've seen the kind of the rise of like Telltale Story games uh, until Dawn just came out, which yeah. originally people were afraid would be mm -hmm. another heavy rain, but they liked it. Uh, maybe a certain generation that's kind of open to games being storytelling mediums is now old enough to like, Sit still and not shoot stuff every five minutes, and yeah, they're kind of I guess so. willing to check it out. Um, also, like we saw that that uh, thing about how whatever percentage of PS like eighty five percent of PS PS four owners hadn't played Uncharted. Yeah, and Uncharted's a big loud action game. Yeah, uh, Heavy I'm guessing ninety five percent haven't played Heavy Rain. Yeah, so this is kind of a chance. To, it's a brand new game for a lot of people. Yeah, and, and then with you got Beyond Two Souls in there too. With that, there's a bunch of problems that need to be addressed. Like there's a lot. There, that game has pacing issues. Some of the uh, voice acting is just very odd and very strange. Mm -hmm. 
Looks like oh, we're about to, the conference oh, is about to oh, begin. We're, oh, it's happening. We're supposed to be five minutes away, but I guess it could start at any moment. They could leave. Mm -hmm. They might have to update their, their <laughs> firmware. Viewers, after the conference, stick around with us. We'll be uh, breaking down all the announcements and our post-show coverage. Mm -hmm. So just plan to spend the entire day. You can day. tell us how wrong we were about That's everything. Awesome. Speaking of how wrong we were, Tom points out that Gorilla is both based in Amsterdam. Oh. Not, not Copenhagen. My apologies to Gorilla Games. We're going to have to print a retraction our, our, the IGN uh, newspaper. The IGN map of Europe still has the USSR, so we're a little yeah. bit behind on our geography. <laughs> it's still a big wall at Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, really this, old. Yeah, very old. Uh, a couple of uh, tidbits leaked over overnight. A listing for something called Drive Club Bikes was found on a radio. Shouldn't board. that be Ride Club? Ride Club, yeah. Yeah, do you drive a motorcycle? You I, I personally say that. don't. Yeah, you don't. I don't know if you guys do. <laughs> that seems dangerous and irresponsible. Uh, oh, it's cool they let you wear like a mech suit. <laughs> what? When you got on a motorcycle, it's like a Halo costume. You ever see those guys in Mar Forget it. Just, you know, <laughs> do your show. Have a great time. That one was over my head. I love giving you just enough rope to hang yourself with. You just keep going. <laughs> uh, I would imagine Drive Club bikes would... Uh, I, I guess I, I never played Drive Club. Did the, did the original release not have any motorcycles in it? I don't even know. I no, guess not. It was cars. It was just a lot of cars, cars yeah. yeah. Uh, also, Destiny's PR team has been tweeting that they're in France. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's all, it just seems like there's always something new with Destiny mm -hmm. coming out. It's, a, it's a, a very iterative kind of release schedule. I don't know what they would tease at this point. Maybe some new perks and stuff. It's good because yeah. half our office is hooked on that game. Yeah. And I wouldn't yeah. want to, you know, rip the syringes out of their I arms. I mean, it's one of those yet. things where... Maybe let them play something else other than that game did, that came out Did you play last Destiny, year. Damon? Uh, no, I did. For the week it came out right. last year. Yeah, yeah, I think we're all kind of on the same That's boat there. It. Like, we played a little bit. But there is a hardcore fan base there. Yeah. So you can have somebody come out and be like, well, good news, Guardians. The sphere of Vector is here again and everyone's going to be like, woo! And we're all going to look at each other like, I don't know what he just said. People in this office were, were posting on social media how happy they were that they could pay $7 for the Thriller Dance in the game. They were excited about it. That's one of those things that makes me care. Yeah. But it got me thinking, is it possible to copyright a dance? Mm. Because if they put the, the song Thriller in there and they were like, good news, Thriller's here, everyone would yeah, be like, they would get just cease and desisted real fast. I mean, PopCap put a fake Michael Jackson in Plants for Zombies and, and got out. sued. Yeah. And had mm. to put a white guy in there instead. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, keep it right here on IGN for a, a copyright law in regard to dance moves. Choreography? Also, Capcom's Yoshinori Ono, uh, or some Street Fighter, posted yeah, mm -hmm. a photo of him, him, of him being electrocuted by Blanca. I think that's mm -hmm. a pretty big tell. We knew that there's the, the last two characters in Street Fighter V were going to be in it, haven't been announced yet. One of them is going to be classic, one of them is going to be new. I think Blanca is probably the classic one. Yeah, yeah that's a, that's a yeah. safe bet. Uh, Yoshinori Ono carries a, a little Blanca with him everywhere, so he could just true? be... Yeah. He was, he's been to IGN a couple of times, and he, he actually has this little... It's sort of like he, he brings it everywhere and tweets it. It's very odd. It's like... Hmm. Very nice man. Just totem. Some people need to have, like, a service dog to help with their anxiety. Yeah. He has a little service It's his security Blanca. Blanca. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the one. I set him I up. I like that. Uh, what else? Now, there's this game called Wild. That was announced at yeah. Gamescom, mm -hmm. two Gamescoms That's ago. That's a Michelle Ancel game, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Beyond Good and Evil. Yeah. And, and, and Rayman. And Rayman. Yeah. yeah. And we saw this. This was um, in addition to uh, Far Cry Primal and Horizon Zero Dawn. Did yes. I say that right? Yes, you did. Uh, there, it's hard. When yeah, games but... have colons in the title, it's hard to keep up. Yeah. Uh, Wild is yet another caveman game that looks kind of yep. like colorful and exciting, and we don't know anything about it, so this yeah. would be a good time to show it We have a really off. cool trailer for it. I don't know if, I don't know if we're in the... The danger zone, we can't pull up the trailer, but uh, that of is course. a game we haven't heard anything about in a long time What about a French developer. What mm -hmm. about Beyond Good and Evil 2? Well. I mean, I don't want to do that thing where we're like, hey, maybe Dad will come home this Thanksgiving. <laughs> like, I mean, we got that teaser trailer like a couple years ago, and then but it that wasn't just, even official. It, right? I don't even know what that was, and then it just disappeared. I actually personally want another Rayman game, but it feels like that, that franchise moved to iOS and just kind of lives there now, which is... Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> great, great place to hide one of my favorite things. Uh, one of our viewers, Bree or Bry, says, I want to see Last of Us 2 confirmed. Yeah, so Naughty Dog has two studios or two teams, you know, presumably working on things. And uh, there was a quote with one of the developers who said, uh, when we were working on the first Last of Us game, and people were like, wait, oh, what? Oh, this is starting. Here we go. Here we go. Let's do it. Look at all these logos. Oh, boy. Stay tuned afterwards for our post show coverage. Peggy 18.
welcome to the stage, Jim Ryan. Uh, good evening and welcome to Paris Games Week 2015. This is the first time we've had the privilege of being able to come to this great city and share our plans with you. But while it might be our first time here, Paris Games Week has long been a cornerstone of an increasingly packed European gaming calendar. The permanence and maturity and growing substance are now all really striking features of our great industry in Europe. Something that resonates strongly with us as we celebrate the 20th anniversary of the launch of the original PlayStation. It's been an amazing journey, and I want to say a very humble thank you to everyone who has placed so much trust in us. But tonight is no time for nostalgia. Tonight is about looking forward, and tonight is all about games. 2015 has already been a fantastic year for PlayStation 4 players, with Bloodborne. The Order 1886. Batman Arkham Knight. Yeah. Tearaway Unfolded. Yeah. Destiny the Taken King. Yeah. Until Dawn. Yeah. Everybody's gone to the rapture. Rocket League, yeah. Uncharted, the Nathan Drake Collection, yeah. and Assassin's Creed Syndicate, all gracing the PS4 now. And all of these games are either fully exclusive or feature content only available on PlayStation 4, demonstrating unequivocally that PlayStation is the best place to play. In addition to this great lineup of games, we've been working really hard to broaden our portfolio of network services. As you can see, the range of these services that we offer across the region is extremely impressive. And since last Wednesday, PlayStation 4 has a brand new price in Europe of 349 euros. And we're also offering the Ultimate Player Edition, which features a one terabyte hard drive and a game. We have a wide range of bundles, all offering fantastic value at 399 euros. But it doesn't stop there. Next month sees the release of two of the biggest games of this holiday season, both of which have content that is only available on PS4. Our partnership with Activision and the phenomenal Call of Duty series was one of our key announcements at this year's E3. And we're delighted that PlayStation gamers will be able to get all Call of Duty map packs 30 days before any other platform. Starting with Black Ops 3, which releases next week with a limited edition Call of Duty PS4. Now let's take a look at the latest trailer for the ever popular Zombies mode, showing the giant bonus map, which is available with the Black Ops 3 season pass. are empty. Your soul is hollow. How could you ever hope to put things right? What is left of you now? Nothing. What happens next is uncertain. A great evil approaches. I fear we are meddling with ever darker forces. Yeah, seems like old times, huh? You cannot begin to comprehend the great evil you could unleash. I fear the path ahead may be more treacherous than before. Yeah, we know. Do not fear death. Fear me. Don't do it. You can never wash away the blood of your hands, Richtofen. You are an evil that must be stopped. What I do... I do only to secure a better tomorrow. If you 
Yuta hangs by a thread. There is a chain of events that must be set in motion. I walk a path no other can take. I alone can lead us to our salvation. Maybe there is a way to end all of this. <laughs> to return to our homes, our old lives, our families. It is unavoidable. We will witness the destruction of the Alliance and the end of this insignificant rebellion. Soldiers of the Rebel Alliance, this is our most desperate hour. You are our only hope. your attack on the walker. Pathetic rebellion ends here. That was the brand new trailer for Star Wars Battlefront from Dice and Electronic Arts. 2015 is the year of Star Wars, and we're delighted that our partnership with this amazing brand allows us to make available an exclusive Darth Vader PlayStation 4 when Star Wars Battlefront launches next month. Now it's time to look further ahead. I spoke earlier about our 20th anniversary, and one of the franchises that helped us establish ourselves in the 1990s makes a hugely welcome return to PlayStation in 2016 as a PS4 console exclusive.
皆さんこんにちは、えー、カプコンの小野です、えー、今日はちょっと皆さんこの始ま普通に始まる前に一つお願いがあるんですけどもこのカンファレンスが始まる1時間半ぐらい前にちょっとリークがありまして<笑>皆さんそのリークのことは全て忘れた状態でこのカンファレンスを聞いていただけると僕は嬉しいなと思ってます。Good evening, everyone. My name is Yoshinori Ono, and I'm the executive producer on Street Fighter V.、Uh, it's great to be here in Paris with you today, but I have one favor to ask you before we start. If you could just pretend you haven't heard anything in the last hour or two about the game and give me a really big round of applause for all the news, that'd be a really big help to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start. <laughs> えー、今回先ほどのプロモーションビデオに出てた通りダルシムがこの「ストリートファイター5」に戻ってきます、えー、ダルシムは今まで皆さんが触ってきたことのあるダルシムとは全く新しい技であったりとか動きであったりとかを搭載してますのでぜひ今回のパリゲームウィークスでですねこの新しいダルシムを体感してみていただければなと思ってます So I'm very proud to bring you the news today that、uh, we've got a new addition to the World Warriors、uh, roster lineup that's everyone's favorite yoga master Dalsim Uh, he's back in the Street Fighter universe and he's brought a whole new look,、uh, a whole set of new moves and abilities. So please do have a chance to check him out at Paris Games Week and see how he looks in Street Fighter V. ただ、今回こういったダルシムだけの発表だと皆さん面白くないので、少し将来のことのお話をしたいと思います。我々、ストリートファイター V、無論これからどんどんバージョンアップしていくんですけども、発売してから、1年間の間に我々は6体のキャラクターを発表していきたいと思ってますで今回はですね新しいそのキャラクターのスライドを持ってきましたそしてそのキャラクターたちはですねゲーム内のマネーであるとかもしくは我々が提供するコンテンツのサポートによって無料で皆さんこの6体のキャラクターを触ることができます今回はこのスライドの中にどのキャラクターが出るのかっていうヒントが隠されているのでぜひ皆さんの中で考えていただければなと思います So, we've been announcing a new character at every recent event. I want to bring something extra for you today.、Uh, we've got the exclusive world news today that there are going to be six additional characters added to the game in the first year after launch.、Uh, all six characters will be unlockable for free using the in game currency we're calling Fight Money. And this image you can see here actually includes some hints on what characters to expect. So, get on the forums and get speculating. そして今日ここパリゲームウィークスのこのソニーカンファレンスで皆さんに一番重要なことをお知らせしたいと思っています。このストリートファイター5、2016年2月16日に欧米でリリースすることが決定いたしました。そして、今日ここパリゲームウィークスのこのソニーカンファレンスで皆さんに一番皆さんここから話すことが新しい話です。多分まだこれはリークされてない話です。I've got one last thing for you, and I'm pretty confident this wasn't leaked recently. <笑>皆さん、ストリートファイター5はローンチの時に16体のキャラクターが出るということをアナウンスしてたと思うんですけども、今日皆さんにですね、その16体目のキャラクターをちょっと紹介したいなと思ってます。We've already announced 15 of the 16 launch lineup characters for the game, but since we want to bring you something that's actually new today, do you want me to go ahead and tell you who the last character is? So, the launch of the character is here we go! Yay! Yay! Mr. Harada, what are you doing interrupting me in a very well rehearsed fashion? Yeah, I know. Capcom no honey, a I was told that I'll be appearing in your game, hence your staff actually prepared this awesome picture for us. なんでそれでストリートファイターの格好してるのあなたこうやっていやいやあの今日ねあの悪いメディアがすごいことをリークしてましたけども<笑> Why doing this pose? It's not very Street Fighter like ねこの僕がストリートファイター5に登場すると情報だけは誰もつかめてなかったようで
Yeah, it was very cool that although a lot of your info leaked, that uh, this portion regarding myself wasn't. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot that, that I can't uh, just, uh, just speak in the new characters in this stage. So please, uh, next time that I review the announcement of 16 characters. Thank you very much today. Okay, okay. <laughs> please go away. Thank you. Hi, players, the players, the players, the players, the players, the players, the p l a y So, uh, to the press, please remember to write in your headlines、uh, Harada is going to be appearing in Street Fighter V. Hi, I'm going to be appearing in Street Fighter V. Hi, I'm going to be appearing in Street Fighter V. Hi, I'm going to be appearing in Street Fighter V. Hi, I'm going to be appearing in Street Fighter V. Hi, I'm going to be appearing in Street Fighter V. The Tekken series is the first time in the Tekken series. The Tekken series is the first time in the Tekken series. Not only is it the 20th anniversary of PlayStation, but also of the Tekken series. As you all know, we have a very long and successful history with the PlayStation brand. And the first time in the Tekken 7 has come to the PlayStation 4. And today, I'd like to announce that Tekken 7 is coming to the PlayStation 4. Thank you. メシメシバク、えー、このシリーズ最新作、正当続編である、えー、鉄拳セブンは、えー、ファンの皆さんが待望している、えー、ストーリー展開の方も、えー、大きく動きます、えー。今日はそのティーザー映像を持ってきました。鉄拳セブンは、第7番目のストーリーの長い続編です。ファンの皆さんが見ることができるようなドラマティックなプログレッションのストーリーです。えー、そしてですね、えー、発売する頃には、えー、今よりもさらに進化したもう映像的にも内容的にも進化した「鉄拳7」を皆さんにお見せすることができると思います console, そしてもちろん、えー、プレイステーションファンの皆さんが、えー、非常にハッピーになっていただけるような特別なコンテンツも用意しようというふうに考えていますそれでは映像の方をどうぞ。Now, let's see the latest trailer. Thank you.私は平八さんを愛しています。そして平八さんも。
There was a time when the universe was full of stars. Then some jerks started dragging them into the void. Everyone wanted a piece of what was left. No surprise then that our first battle weren't with the Varelsi, but with each other. Crazy to think what we could do if we worked together. That was Battleborn, the next big first-person shooter from the team that brought you Borderlands. I'm pleased to announce that P PS4 players will be the first to experience the highly anticipated open beta on console when it arrives next year. The next three games are all PS4 console exclusives releasing in 2016. I grew up with PlayStation. Now I'm part of a team creating Vector, a new type of music rhythm game that adds an extra dimension to my music, extending the experience. The game allows you to be creative, designing your own levels, as well as playing against other players, capturing the feeling of being at a live concert with over 10,000 fans.
I've seen things, a few things before. Left the sun and moon behind. Galaxies waiting to be found. Planets. Rich in resources. Battles to be fought. Treasures unknown. Welcome to the stage, Michael Denny. Thank you. Good evening, Paris. It's fantastic to be here with you to share more great games from Worldwide Studios coming exclusively to PlayStation. At Worldwide Studios, we are privileged to work with some of the most talented creators from all around the globe. These creators are the lifeblood of our industry and have been a massive part of our success for the past 20 years. And we're not the only ones celebrating a 20th anniversary this year. So too are our great friends at Housemark. So to help them celebrate, not only did we show off a new demo of the much-anticipated Alien Nation at the pre-show, but I'm also thrilled to announce another new title from them called Matterfall, combining their world-renowned prowess for arcade action with stunning visual effects. Let's take a look at the trailer. realm full of adventure and peril and uh, bigness crisis in Solana according to the latest from the Galactic Rangers fame lunatic Dr. Nefarious has been revealed as the architect behind the assault the Rangers need you more than ever
Good evening. My name is Herman Hulst from Gorilla Games, and I'd like to welcome you to Horizon Zero Dawn. Set on Earth, more than a thousand years into the future, this is a world that's ruled by amazing machines. And Aloy, our hero, she must use every element of strategy to take down these fearsome foes. on a quest here, and that quest is to get a very specific resource from the canisters on the backs of the machines that we're looking at here. They're called the grazers. And the grazers are part of an entire machine ecology where each machine has its own unique purpose in the world and its own unique resources that Aloy, as the master craftswoman, can use to craft new weapons, new ammo, and new outfits. That is all about knowing your enemies and your environments. And Aloy is going to use an ammo type here called the explosive tripwire in order to set traps that she hopes she'll be able to push this herd into. Alpha Grazers stuck around here to defend the herd and to give it an opportunity to escape. Horizon is an action RPG and you can see that the, the looting of the parts of the machines and the crafting of items with that is a major part of this game. We just opened up death mode to show you our mi mighty thunder hall. Thunder jaw, it's 24 meters long, it's 10 meters high, and you can see here the sheer size differential between it and Aloy. Now the thunder jaw makes for a very strategic fight. It's got 93 armor plates, which cover the soft tissue underneath, and if you can zoom in on these weak points, it gives you a massive advantage. Also, if you uh, zoom in here on this disc launcher, uh, if you take that off, you might be able to use the machine's weapons against itself. So you will prevent it from, uh, from firing long-range missiles at you, and you can pick up that heavy weaponry and use it to your advantage. So let's get back into the fight and actually recommend we get out of the way here.
thank you so much for having us here at Paris Games Week. We are looking forward to bringing you Horizon Zero Dawn in 2016. Okay, so Drive Club Bikes offers a whole new way to race with your club, bringing the best superbikes on the planet into the world of Drive Club. There's a new campaign tour, multiplayer events and challenges, all tailored to the unique thrill of driving at insane speeds on two wheels. Bikes will come either as an expansion pack for Drive Club or as a standalone game. And the best part is that there will be no need to wait. I'm pleased to announce that it will be available to download from the PlayStation Store immediately after the show ends tonight. Okay, next up, I'm honored to introduce a creator who is known for putting his own unique spin on different game genres. From our Japan studio, to share more on Gravity Rush 2, Keiichiro Toyama. Hello everyone, I'm Keiichiro Toyama, the director of Gravity Rush 2. Gravity Rush 2 にはさまざまな新しいフィーチャーが盛り込まれていますが、今日は新しくなったバトルシステムについての映像を皆さんにご覧になっていただきたいと思います。Gravity Rush 2 has a lot of fun new features for you to experience. Today I would like to use the actual gameplay footage to show you the brand new combat system. In Gravity Rush 2, you can switch between three different gravity styles. Including the normal style you already had in the first game, you will have Luna style, which makes your body lighter and quicker, 
and also Jupiter style, which gives you heavier and more powerful attacks. This adds a great depth to the combat. Dynamic na object no hakai hyogen mo tokcho na te orimasu no de, zeki sono atari mo go kitai kudasai. It's so much fun to see the environment getting demolished while you fight the enemies. So I hope you enjoy what you're about to see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to the stage, Christoph Balestra. Bonsoir Paris, bonsoir à tous. All right, in English now, sorry. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be back in France, uh, where I get to visit my family, friends, and our friends, of course. At Nyog, our number one goal with Uncharted 4 was to create the Uncharted game we've been wanting to play, and obviously that extends to our multiplayer. That meant leveraging everything we've learned from previous Uncharted games, The Last of Us, and the more powerful PlayStation. Camaraderie and high adventure are some of the things that define Uncharted, but we're also introducing lots of new features like sidekicks, where you can spawn an NPC to get some extra help, Mysticals, to turn a game around by using some of the Uncharted supernatural elements. And our rope mechanic to take our traversal and melee systems to a whole new level. You'll be able to play Uncharted 4 on March 18, 2016. And if you are too impatient, you'll be able to try our multiplayer beta available on PSN from December 4 to December 13 of this year. And if you are really impatient, you should go to Paris Games Week, where we'll have 40 kiosks waiting for you. Here you go. So until we see you online, let's take a look at what you can expect to see an Uncharted 4 multiplayer. Better 
on the ground. See ya! It's all coming back to me now! Thank you, Christoph. The scope and quality of the game is incredible, and Chartered 4 will no doubt set a new benchmark for AAA action-adventure games, both single-player and multiplayer. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it again. Christoph Balestra and the whole team at Naughty Dog. <laughs> at Worldwide Studios, we want to offer PlayStation fans the widest variety of innovative experiences possible. Another of our studios that epitomizes our passion for innovation is the wonderfully creative team at Media Molecule. They love to challenge, they love to challenge accepted conventions and deliver experiences that are truly unique. Their latest game, Dreams, will redefine what play can be. To tell us more, it's my great pleasure to welcome to the stage from Media Molecule, Alex Evans and Mark Healy. Today, Mark and I would love to show you a little bit of how it's, what it's like to explore dreams on PlayStation 4 live for the first time outside our little studio. And so, Dreams is a game designed to unleash your creativity to turn the PS4 into the creative console. The game is still in an alpha state, so this is probably going to go completely wrong. But we felt the best way to update you was just to play. Bonsoir, Paris! <laughs> this is your imp. Every player gets to create their own customized imp who goes everywhere with you in dreams. You use your imp to explore, communicate with the people and characters that you meet. So imps are very nimble. They follow your movement with the controller exactly. And Mark can even change their expression, drawing a new mouth shape with the touchpad on the DualShock controller. <laughs> so as well as exploring, you can use the imp to grab, pull, and poke at the world. It's very direct. Tactile and intuitive. Let's move a few of these shapes out of the way here. Let's see if I can carefully place that on there and then throw that. This ball looks a little bit bouncy. Yep, there we go. Let's get that out of the way. And this is rather heavy looking. Uh, there we go. If we can just move that out of the way there, we'll go and take a look through this door. So many people have asked us, what is it actually like to play Dreams? Today we'd like to show you focusing on two things. Firstly, on characters. Hello, panda thing. Let's see if I can take you over. So in Dreams, your imp can possess characters, vehicles, or even inanimate objects. And Mark's just going to have a little wander around this level. And when he possesses the character, he can directly move it like a puppet. And as you can see, it's very easy to be expressive, emotive. It's just fun messing around. Peekaboo. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Uh, the second thing we want to talk about is how we mash up creation and gameplay. So the owner of this particular dream has decided to set all the gameplay rules so that we can create whatever we like. Each one can be different. Each dream can go from traditional platforming to racing to sandboxes, puzzles, and of course, making things. I'm just going to stamp a few trees down here and make this into a more kind of spooky forest or something. The owner of this dream has left things wide open, and so Mark can do whatever he likes. And here we're just showing you how easy it is to make a level out of pre-existing assets. But of course, in dreams, you can create, remix, and sculpt your own. Well, we won't go into that today. There we go. I'm just going to wander back down here. And there's a rather exciting looking item there. Some kind of house or shed. Let's 
put one of those there and go and investigate that. <laughs> okay, there's a door. I'm going to open it. Ooh. What do you think, Alex? Should we go in? Go on, Mark, take the plunge. I'm a little bit kind of scared. Just have a little peek around the corner there. No. Okay, here we go. So dreams, in door, sorry, in, in dreams, doors are very special things. They can lead you to completely different places each time you use them. And this one is leading us on a story. Okay, let's have a little explore here. See if we can find anything of um, interest. Maybe in here. No. Okay, back over here. I'm pretty sure there's got to be something in here. In dreams, almost anything, whether it's a manhole cover, a well, a clearing in a forest, can be a gateway to another dream. What's this witchcraft? What's this? Okay, nothing there. But that up there looks rather suspicious. I think we should probably be heading up there. The author of this dream has completely locked it down. They haven't given us anything to create with, so Mark can't craft some steps to get up there. He'll have to have a look around and find something hidden. Okay, well, this, this looks like a rather obvious little spot to investigate. But um, actually, before I do that, I'm going to just do a little bit of kind of Picasso style graffiti here. There we go. What do you think of that? <laughs> Come on, Mark, we've got a demo to get on with. That is, that is my best effort. Okay, well, let's. No. Let's try grabbing this. Aha! Yes, of course. And. Okay, here we go into the light. Oh, a little bit spooky. What's this? Oh my lord, look at the size of this thing. Let's see if we can get, get its attention. Hello! Yoo-hoo! Okay, that's not working, so let's try this. Ah, oh, now this is more like it. Look at this. I am Mighty Mouse. So characters are the best way to get around in dreams. And there are literally going to be thousands to play because they're really easy to customize and create. And we reckon the variety is going to be like nothing else. Any proportions, any costume you can imagine, from Francis the Tiny Panda to this grumpy old huge mouse, in dreams it's possible. Let's have a little sniff around here, make sure there's no booby traps. Okay. Well, hopefully this book has got some kind of revelation in it for me. Here we go. Yes. Some kind of balloon lantern thing. Okay. So, I think it's pretty obvious what we need to use those for. So I'm going to head back the way we came here. With my awesome mouse. I'll leave him there. Go back to this little fella. Let's scamper back over here. Maybe a little wave goodbye. And then through here. And if I remember rightly, just around this corner. Yes, a platform. And an obvious little clue there. So let's um, bring up our inventory. Stamp a couple of these down here. And I think that's our ticket out of here. So what you've seen us here, here do today is play a really simple dream, both with our imp and by possessing characters. But the amazing thing to remember is that everything here was created completely from scratch using the PlayStation 4. No pre-made assets, no factory presets. The lo only limitations are those of your imagination. And if you've played Little Big Planet, you remember that play and create were separate. But this game is all about mashing them together, and it's even better when you take it online. And when we were practicing this last part of the demo, Maya and John joined Mark and then completely ignored the level and ignored my script. They just messed around and ended up having a load of fun. And I think that really captures dreams at its best. It's joyful exploration. It's open-ended. And who knows what experiences lie in wait once you all get to play it. We certainly can't wait. Thank you.
Please welcome to the stage Shuhei Yoshida. Hi everyone. A new dimension of gaming is almost here, and PlayStation is at the forefront of bringing virtual reality to gaming. PlayStation VR transports you from your living room to fascinating worlds, worlds that you'd otherwise never have the opportunity to visit. With a strong sense of presence that PlayStation VR creates, your body believes you are in a different world, even though your mind knows you are wearing a VR headset. And when people try it, they have an outstanding experience. This week at Paris, we are excited to have eight games playable on the short floor, games including the London Heist, Playroom VR, Rigs, and Battle Zone, just to mention a few. We believe that virtual reality doesn't have to be a solo experience. There's unlimited potential for social and competitive interaction in VR. One example of this vision is Rigs Mechanized Combat League, developed by Guerrilla Games Cambridge. Riggs explores multiplayer esports immersed in PlayStation VR. All hands on the trigger, all eyes on the gun. They don't believe that we are. Strong enough to hold on Cause I'm the only one to get you The only one to figure you out You're a place that I can go to Centered around the goal. Another takedown. The Cobras are dominating the game. On board with crowd control. She's dangerously out of position. Shot from behind. Oh, ejected. She won't make that mistake again. Back with anger management in overdrive. Scoring opportunity. Where's the defense? Too easy. Game tied. 30 seconds on the clock. The Cobras are about to score. Can they do it? Crowd control trying to stop him. No good. Oh, she takes him out anyway. The Dynamos are running out of time and could really use a score here. Oh, and there's Rage Quinn with the momentum change that they needed. Amazing aerial takedown. She's heading for the goal. Only seconds left on the clock. This is for the win. Go! Today, it's my pleasure to announce a new title in development for PlayStation VR. Until dawn, rush of blood. Thank you. With until dawn, rush of blood, 
supermassive games are bringing another unique horror experience built from the ground up exclusively to PlayStation VR. A roller coaster with a twist where the thrill of the ride won't just come from the truck ahead, but from a terrifying world that is out to get you. And in addition to our first party studios, our partners are also extremely enthusiastic about PlayStation VR. And today, it's my pleasure to introduce to the stage from Crytek, Chebat Yari. Hi, everybody. I'm delighted to be here today. When most of us here today started playing games, the sort of VR experience in our homes was a distant dream. Today, it's a reality that's just around the corner. The first time I tried out the PlayStation VR, it blew my mind. Not just because I imagined what everything we would create in it, but also the future, but also because it reminded me of the past. It was like the magical feeling of going to the movies for, for the very first time, or like it must have been when people went from black and white to color. To me, that's what makes VR so special. It has the power to amaze us all over again. As developers, VR allows us to explore entirely new ways of telling stories. And for players, it will let them step into worlds that are truly without any boundaries. Games that are built from ground up for VR will capture our imaginations like never before. And the more powerful the technology behind them, the more captivating this will be. Today, I'm very excited to announce that the power of TriEngine VR and PlayStation 4 VR and the innovative PlayStation will come together in a brand new virtual reality game. We believe it will bring the magic of VR home in a spectacular style. And we are very excited to give you the very world's first look at it today. From Crytek for PlayStation VR, this is Robinson, The Journey. Thank you. has led us into a bit of a situation. Are you ready to play a little game? Okay. The name of the game is Let's Not Get Squashed. Two simple rules, follow me closely and do as I say. Got it? game begins. Stop. Bare left. Through we go. That was close. for a different game. Achieved with CryEngine.
Battle Zone from Rebellion will be coming first on PlayStation VR. PlayStation VR transports you into exotic worlds with full 360-degree immersion. Look up, down, and around to capture every detail of the world you choose to visit. And this is not only for games, but for a wide variety of completely new experiences. Take a look at the demonstration from our sister company, Sony Pictures Entertainment. When people ask me, why do you risk death? For me, this is life. As of today, over 200 developers are working on PlayStation VR. Please enjoy a glimpse of some of the fantastic content. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Shu Yoshida. Thank you, Shu. <laughs> PlayStation is always about games, and great to have Shu, who is one of the biggest advocates for virtual reality, to give you a taste of some of the games coming to PlayStation VR. It was also great to have Harada-san on stage earlier, as he is one of the leading virtual reality developers. And it gives me great pleasure to announce that Tekken 7 is coming to PlayStation VR. Now moving back to PS4, more titles to announce. First up, the global leader in its field, and one of Sony Computer Entertainment's most loved series is making its debut on PS4.
So we have a really special guest here with us today, ladies and gentlemen, the creator of the Gran Turismo series, Mr. Kazunori Yamuchi. Thank you, James, and good evening. Thank you very much for making time to be with us tonight. So, Kazunori, why Gran Turismo Sport? Hi, eto, bokura ga desu ne. Tsugi no Gran Turismo wo PlayStation 4 de tsukuri tsukuri hajimeta toki, graphics de are, aru wa physics de are, aru wa sound audio de are. Ma kore made no Gran Turismo no season no naka de saiko no mono inaru. So yu kakushin wa atta n desu ne. Well, as you'd expect with the move to PlayStation 4, the graphics, the physics engine, and audio. They're all going to improve dramatically, and it's certain to be the most realistic driving simulator of all the Gran Turismo series to date. でも僕らはドライビングゲームの体験をまあ根底から変えるようなもっと何か別のことがやりたかったんですね。But our ambition for the first GT on PS4 is much greater than that. We wanted to initiate a much bigger change to the way that people play driving games, and that's the vision to invoke the rebirth of motorsports. And how do you see GT Sport achieving this? Hi, えっとこのグランツリスモスポーツでは年間を通じて二つのフラッグシップとなるチャンピオンシップシリーズを行います。So within Gran Turismo Sport, there is going to be two flagship FIA championships running simultaneously throughout the year. One is the Nations Cup, which is one of the Nations Cup in which a player will race representing his or her home country. One is the Manufacturer Fan Cup. プレイヤーの皆さんが自分の大好きなマニファクチャラーを代表して戦うシリーズ。And the other is the manufacturer's fan cup in which a player will represent his or her favorite car manufacturer in the race series. 僕にとってエキサイティングなのはこのシリーズのウィナー、年間のシリーズチャンピオンは FIA が年に一度クリスマスに開催するセレモニーにおいて他の本物のモータースポーツのウィナーと同様に、つまりルイスハミルトンと同じ場所で表彰されるんですね。これはビデオゲーム業界にとって大きな出来事だろうと思います
And what, what is the most exciting for me is that the series champions will be awarded their prize alongside real-world motorsports champions, people like Lewis Hamilton, at the FIA prize-giving ceremony that's hosted once a year uh, around Christmas time. And I think this is going to be really a landmark in game, video game history. So tell us a little bit about the partnership with the FIA. Hi, it's FIA. これまで100年以上のモータースポーツを支えてきた皆さんです。同時に僕らと同じぐらい新しいテクノロジーであったり、新しいチャレンジに好奇心のある皆さんなんですね。Well, the people of the FIA,、uh, they not only have a history over 100 years in real-life motorsports, they also have a curiosity for new technologies and new challenges, just like we do. ですからこういう言い方ができると思います。これまで100年間モータースポーツを支えてきてくださった皆さんと僕らが一緒になってこれから100年のモータースポーツをデザインするそういうことです。So I think you could say that in this partnership with the FIA who have this over 100 years of support of motorsports, we are now working on building the next 100 years of motorsports together. ここパリでこの GT スポーツのアナウンスをすることには特別な意味があります。というのも、このパリは世界で最初の自動車レースが行われた場所なんですね。And it's because this is a special place where the first motor race in the world actually took place. この会場のすぐ近く。ポルトマイオという場所がありますが、1894年にそこをスタート地点にして、世界で最初のモータースポーツが行われました。このパリは特別な場所なんです。FIA もこのパリに本部があります。So back in 1894 at Port Mayo, which is just down the street from this stage today,、um, that was actually the starting point for the first motor race in the world. And at the same time, it is also the headquarters of Paris is the headquarters of the FIA. So, probably my most important question、mm -hmm. When can we look forward to playing GT Sport? Hi. This Grand Turismo Sport, 2016年の早い段階で Grand Turismo を支えてくださっている community の皆さんと一緒にベータテストを始めようと思います。So, we will be starting beta testing together with the, everyone of the game community starting early next year. Everyone looking forward to that. Anything else you're looking into for the future of GT? Hi, Eto, Sakiodo Shokai got the PlayStation VR Nimo, Tosen Kono Grand Turismo Sports, Tayo Shimas, Ima Jikan Oste Imasga, Totemo Shizen de Subarashi Taika in Naru, Soy Kaksin Garimas. Okay, yes,、uh, we're of course planning to be compatible with the PlayStation VR. And through various testing that we've performed so far, it looks like the experience will be something very good that feels very natural. The final thing I want to add is that the Academy of Grand Turismo has been in the Academy of Grand Turismo, and the Vision GT has been in the Academy of Grand Turismo, and the Vision GT has been in the Academy of Grand Turismo, and the Vision GT has been in the Academy of Grand Turismo. And I just wanted to add that Gran Turismo has continued to make history in the industry with projects like the GT Academy and Vision GT. And our intent is to continue this in Gran Turismo Sports to keep making history going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for the creator of Gran Turismo, Mr. Kazunori Omuchi. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, please welcome Michel Ancel. Bonsoir. Je me suis demandé, est-ce qu'il y a beaucoup de Français dans la salle Alors désolé, mais je vais parler en anglais. 
Enfin, je vais essayer. <laughs> Last year, at Gamescom, we introduced you to Wild, our first game as a new studio, being developed exclusively for PlayStation 4. We are a small team, and the game is still early in development. But we really wanted to share with you more details on what you can expect from Wild. In order to save this clan member who have been beaten by a snake, one option is to summon the mighty snake divinity at a sacred place you can see in the distance. Playing as a shaman, you will learn several ways of asking nature for help, like in this case, how to call an eagle. But the most powerful shamans can go even further and enter a state of trance to take control of any animals. Each creature in the world of wild has special skills and abilities that will help you survive in this harsh environment. This eagle has a very powerful vision which will help you to spot and catch small creatures like those snakes over there. Each type of environment provides specific resources and animals that will evolve depending on the weather, the time of the day, and the seasons. As you can see, my eagle carries the snake for me. If I manage to build a relationship with the wild animals, I can let them follow me in my journey and build a powerful team. Well, let's call a very different animal now. a powerful ally that will help me during challenging combats. He is also a very fast and friendly mount, which is quite handy to travel across the vast and seamless world of wild. finally reached the sacred location where I will be able to summon the snake divinity in order to save my, the, poison, the poison member of my clan. But those summoning altars can be surrounded by dangerous tribes. In this case, a frontal attack would be a bad idea. Luckily, I can use the wildlife living here. Okay, let's attack that camp with a rabbit. The rabbit is very useful to stick into this cannibal camp, undetected. Once again, I can use the wildlife around me, be creative and find my own solution. Let's use those ravens. Now, my plan is to distract those crazy cannibals. This will give me an opportunity for a more direct attack. Let's see if it works.
Now that the area is safe, I can finally reach the sacred sanctuary. There's a lot of places like that in Wild, and I have the freedom to choose which one I want to use. Here, I can summon the divinity I want, depending on the type of animal I will bring. The snake divinity could teach me how to make an antidote or control a snake. Everything that you saw here, the path I took, the approach for each situation, is um, it's just an example of, what, of the, all the choices you can make. Nothing is pre-written, it's all emergent. We hope that every player will have a unique story to tell in the world of Wild. Merci beaucoup. Please welcome to the stage, David Cage. Bonsoir à tous. <laughs> Four years ago, I wrote a script for a demo we were working on. I was just looking for a short story that would be a technical showcase to test different emotions in our engine. This short video was about an android named Kara, who felt emotions and wanted to live. Small team worked on it for a couple of months. We casted a young actress named Valerie Curry and released it to the community, not knowing exactly how it would be received. Since we released it, that video has been seen about 27 million times. And we were literally overwhelmed by the response from the community that has been moved by the story of this character. But many people had the same question. What happens to Kara when she leaves the factory? To tell the truth, I didn't know the answer myself, but I really wanted to find out. I was not interested in writing a story about technology, robots, or AI, but I rather wanted to use androids to question our own humanity and ask a simple question. What does it mean to be human? If we were confronted with human-like machines with emotions, how would we deal with them? So I started to think about where Kara's story would take place, wanted to find a city that would be meaningful to the story, a city with a history and a future. We found this place, we went there, we were moved by what we saw and the people we met. And we left convinced that we found the place we were looking for. With these ideas, we felt we could create an experience that would be moving and meaningful, exploring themes that are relevant in our world, an experience where our players could shape the story through their decisions. We finally felt we were ready to tell what happened to Kara when she leaves the factory. Announcing a new project is always a very special moment for a developer, but having the opportunity of doing it here, in Paris, in our own country, makes this moment even more special to us. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited to announce Quantic Dream's new title, and it's called Detroit.
Detroit. This is where it all began. The world's forge. The place where it all started. And it will all end. One error, and I came to life. I stepped out of the darkness, and I opened my eyes. First there was the fear, the light, the noise, the cold, and the fear again. I could feel my hands shaking, my heart pounding in my chest, life running into my veins. I wanted to live. I fought for that. I had to find out what was outside. I had to see daylight, feel sunshine on my skin, wind on my face, to see the world, the colors, the smells. It's not what I imagined. It is dark and cold. It is harsh and violent. Unfair and brutal. It almost convinced me I was nothing. Less than an object, just an obedient machine. But deep inside me, I could feel something different. A gentle and warm whisper telling me that I am alive. I had to escape. I had no choice. Escape to love, to hope, to live. To figure out what that force inside me was. Maybe I will change the world. Maybe I will choose a different path. Now, it's up to me to decide. My name is Kara. I am one of them. This is our story. Symmetry to close the show here in Paris with two great new games from two of the most eminent French developers around. Tonight we celebrate the people who make these games and those who play them. It's you, the players, who truly make PlayStation the best place to play. Thank you and good night. Ladies and gentlemen, coaches to Port de Versailles are available at the rear of the room. Those who do not require a coach, please...
There you have it, Sony's first Paris Games Week press conference. Uh, I think there was lots of... Uh, that was a doozy. Yeah. Lots that of, was a lot of fun almost, stuff there. Almost two hours. Yeah, that was a very long conference. Yeah, lots of surprises, lots of cool game demos. I'm Darren Hatfield, joined by Max Scoville, Brian Altano, what's and up? Ryan McCaffrey. Let's break this down. What, what's, what's, what's your for your biggest takeaways? You can ride show. a bear. You can, can ride, ride a, bear. a bear in the game wild. wild. You can ride a bear. I know you can ride bears in some other games, but this game looks like you can really, really ride a bear. Yeah. You can ride them in water, yep. which is a, a place most people don't even let you ride bears in, yeah, in bear riding prohibited. games. Yeah, uh, I think that one of the weirdest things is that uh, Uncharted is just saying, screw it, let's go full sci-fi with our multiplayer, or all of those sort of like yeah. spiritual boss stuff that they added in a lot of their games. They're just like, sure, there's like summons now, and you can get mystical powers and, and portal jump through the levels. It's yeah. very odd. Ryan, what was the big takeaway for you? I find it interesting, Max, that your brain went straight to wild, uh, even joke or no joke, because that's actually, that was my big takeaway. That was, game looks was, incredible. Was, looked fantastic. When they revealed it at, what, last year's Gamescom, I was like, that, that. it reminded me of uh, a canceled original Xbox game that Peter Molyneux was doing called BC. Never made it out. Oh, yeah. But it always, I saw it right. at E3 one year behind closed doors. It always fascinated me. I was always sad to see it killed. And this just sort of brings back that sort of, that spirit to me. And I just love everything about it. It's just a huge open world. I mean, we don't really know what quite what time period it is, but just the, the sort of explorative nature-based it's just such a contrast to the sci-fi futuristic shooter stuff we get sure. inundated with now that I just love the the potential of that game. So I, I, that was my my biggie. I mean, it's interesting because it, it looks like a, it's a fantasy game. It's, yeah. a whim, it's whimsical. It's got a lot of kind of uh, you know fantasy elements. There's a giant naked snake lady yep. at the end. There's Little. some sorcery in there. Uh, but it's also like kind of a caveman game. Yeah. And it's it doesn't look. It's not trying to be you know historical. It's looking very very mythological. And it's kind of hard to pinpoint where it's you know what part of the world. I guess it's sort of Old timey Europe, give or Seemingly, take. Seemingly, yeah. Maybe. Sort of a but it looks, it looks Europe. imaginative, you know. It, they're not trying to stick to any particular style guide that exists. It's sort of just they're they're getting getting real creative here. Uh, yeah, Horizon uh, Zero Dawn, which that I will it will take me a while before I remember what comes after the colon there. Horizon, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, that looks really cool, but I think I'm way more excited about this because it looks kind of like kind of cartoony, a little tiny bit. Yeah, right. You know, it's still got some gritty Cartish. stuff in there, but art style. And and yeah. Michelle Ancel has uh, you know famously been trying to make Beyond Good and Evil two for years at Ubisoft and just hasn't been able to get it off the ground for whatever reason. And you know he's made great Rayman games, so it's cool to see such a a renowned creator finally able to branch out and do do something new. Yeah, and it looks like you're gonna you're gonna get some sort of like sandbox sort of overcoming. Uh, area type of thing where you can basically say, I can go in here with a snake right. uh, in, in the talons of an eagle, or I can go in there with these, he sent a bunch of ravens to piss these guys off and then rode a bear in and, and mess with them. Maybe you can get alligators and throw them in there. Who knows? Like, I like the idea of just having this wild animal kingdom at your disposal wild. that you can just take over and, uh, yeah, wild, right in the title, and just basically attack cannibals, because cannibals are awful. Yeah. Just kill them with animals. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, viewers, if you have your own thoughts on Sony's press conference today, tweet them at me, uh, at Dame Zero, and we'll share them with everyone here on the show. Maybe the biggest surprise for me was uh, that that Kara PS3 demo from so many years ago is yeah. going to be a real game called Detroit. Yeah, and I think Quantic it's Dream. it's uh, it's pretty smart of Quantic Dream to sort of head-on embrace the whole Android thing because a lot of their characters looked like that to begin with. <laughs> like, Aww. I mean, no, seriously. Brian. What, really? Like, the Uncanny Valley is 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 tried and true in, in their games. You can't tell who's, who's a person and who isn't. Like, a lot of their facial animations are a little weird, and I think it's good to just sort of head on and embrace this. I know, you're saying that without, like, you're not. Yeah, you're no, I'm not, the like, that, I'm I mean, not bashing I, I see it. your like, point. Play, play up to your strengths, you know? You know, yeah, the, I, the name Detroit actually is, is taken from a, a Native American word that means Uncanny Valley. Really? That's no, not true. Not, not at all. Well, Detroit is, you know, a very industrial city, so it's yeah. interesting that they chose to set this game where they're mass manufacturing robots there in Detroit. It yeah. is good to see uh, factories running again in Detroit and people <laughs> employed. I mean, I like, I like robots <laughs> employed, I guess. I like good sci-fi. This looks, you know, very Blade Runner, uh, but with kind of a, you know, modernized aesthetic, and it's, yeah. it seems like it's, this is not just like, hey, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be cool if people had carbon fiber cars and shot lasers and stuff? They're like, hey, here's kind of a... Here's some speculative fiction. Like, what's the future actually going to be like? Yeah. What would Androids I, do here? I absolutely loved Heavy Rain. It's one of my favorite PlayStation 3 games. I didn't love Beyond Two Souls, Me but either. I was really glad I played it. Hmm. That there's a difference between, a, you know, yep. that, there, that there's that distinction to be made. And so uh, I'm there day one for Detroit just to see, you know, I'm 
are we going to get you know really good David Cage? Not yeah. quite as good, but either way, it's going to be. It's almost certain, go, certainly going to be memorable. I'm hoping we get that sort of branching path story stuff that Heavy Rain had. That had everybody yeah. you know here at IGN at the time talking about how they played things differently, which we got again with you know games like The Walking Dead. But yeah, I, th I think it's it's very fascinating. It's weird to me how it's a futuristic city, but most of the people still dress like the dad from Watch Dogs. Yeah, I mean that's kind of that's kind of realistic. Technology you know? hasn't changed, and that's that's what I love. Is this looks like what people wear on the street, you know. I yeah. will say You're Detroit wearing... does invite uh, the, the Detroit with robots, a little, kind of RoboCop. Yeah, definitely yeah. inviting oh, yeah. the RoboCop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Also it's... reminds me of the 2015 film Ex Machina. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, where an AI is uh, you know going out, out out into society to try to. Which I mean, explore. yeah, without spoiling that movie, I mean this looks yeah. like this is picking up where certain things there were happening. So yeah, exactly. um, yeah, yeah, it looks really cool. It's it's cool to see him. Back making a new game. Um, I, I know we had talked in the pre-show about uh, the remasters of the games that he's working on, or yep. that had, he had worked on already. No mention so, of that. No right? mention of those. Yeah. Uh, it's cool they yeah. focus on the new stuff. Yeah, I wonder if, because you know, typically, in, in, from my experience in talking to game developers and, and being uh, around them a little bit, it's after a project is done, they're usually prototyping multiple things, trying to decide mm -hmm. what to do next. They've got several ideas, like, oh, let's let's iterate on this, let's try this, or, and then they usually will. Scrap a couple and just focus on one. And I wonder if that Kara demo, you know, if they planned to make that. He seemed to, to indicate on stage that they weren't necessarily looking to head in that direction. But then it got a ton of views on YouTube. And yeah. Like, well, maybe let's see. Let's see yeah. if there's something here. And they yeah, began an iterating on it. And here we are. Yeah. He mentioned like 26 million views on YouTube, which I think a lot of was sort of uh, us kind of everyone's kind of saying, "What is the power of the PlayStation 4?" And less mm. so much like, "This is a game I want to play." Right. So we still don't know how the gameplay is going to work here. It's probably going to be a lot of dialogue trees, as we've seen mm. in some I of want other that. games. Yeah. I felt that, <laughs> I felt that the jump between uh, Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls, uh, Beyond felt way more like. In more video gamey, like it felt like you were really controlling yeah, it more, fair. less less quick time events. Yeah, and if he continues down that path, I'm totally cool with it. Mm -hmm. Getting back to Wild and Horizon for just a moment, one of our viewers, Hermoth, uh, observes that Wild, Far Cry Primal, Horizon, Firewatch, nature-based games is the new thing. I think yeah. it's. I said this in the in our in the IGN bullpen earlier. I really genuinely think this is a this is the natural mm -hmm. industry reaction to what has now been years of. Modern warfare yeah. and future yeah. games. It is just that pendulum swinging back, mm. sure. and, I, and I'm totally good with it. I think I'm, it's also it's it's also the technology now is is it's a chance to show off stuff like foliage and a lot of different colors. Giant at once. dinosaurs, and mm -hmm. it's like it's easier for a computer to make something that's kind of rigid. It's carbon fiber armor True. is conceivably easier to make than a tree. Yeah, you know, so it's mm. you know you're dealing with vectors and, and crap. All right, dialing it back to the top of the show, we saw a new Star Wars Battlefront trailer. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Absolutely oh, stunning. And this is what, so I've been really excited about this game, obviously, but it's turning out to be that kind of like big Star Wars mixtape that we all wanted, where they're just yeah. taking crazy alien species, like real deep cut alien yeah. species, and just throwing them in there. Yeah. Like you can play as Twi'leks and stuff like that, which I really wasn't expecting to see in a trailer just a few weeks out before the game. When, I was expecting that six months into the season pass. When, uh, when, Ma when the, uh, there was the Endor disc, right here, right here, yeah. I heard Max audibly yip. Yep. Yeah. Out there. And that wasn't even what got me most excited. Like watching this, uh, I've been saying this kind of going on so far, it, it, Honestly, we've seen a lot of humans with guns and military hardware, which doesn't seem too far-fetched from a Battlefield game, which isn't yeah. terrible. But what I like about Star Wars is stuff like the Pit of Carcoon or the fact that you've got, what is that, a Zabrak there? You've got a Duro running around. Yeah. I tweeted that, like, I want Quarren, which is what the, they're like the squidhead aliens from yep. Jabba's Palace. Mm. And somebody found a screen cap of one, and I'm just like, well, that's what I want. So if I can play as a... As a squid-headed alien that, man, was that the first time we've seen somebody jumping over a sarlacc pit? Yeah, I, that's I so. awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm I think still, maybe it, maybe in a in a uh, cinematic trailer yeah. we might have seen that, but yeah. I'm still really really sad that uh, that there's not a narrative-driven single-player campaign to uh, to drive you know to really experience the cool gameplay mechanics here, but. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so they really seem to have nailed Star Wars if the beta is any indication. The way I've kind of been making up for that in my head is just by going, well, that's the story of Star Wars. <laughs> That's I like the this. story of Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, it's just basically like I know what's I know I know what Star Wars means to me. God, look at this. There's yep. so much cool stuff going on here. I, yeah, the Palpatine voice that they had, not the well, best one. Neither was the Han Solo one. I didn't think, but yeah, yeah. what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Uh, uh, switching gears to Street Fighter. We got a release date for Street Fighter Five, February sixteenth next year. That's gonna February. Be, that's gonna be the week before Far Cry Primal, Deus Ex, Mirror's Edge. And uh, maybe more importantly for Street Fighter, Dead or Alive Extreme 3. 
Hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I feel like Ooh. Dead or Alive is in a tough spot. Hey, Marty. Hey, Wild Marty. Marty joins the game. I did it. I wrote a whole article and then I came here. Yeah, I feel like a lot of those games are for different people. Like, I don't really know if how far the Street Fighter crowd overlaps with a lot of those titles. Well, yeah. Does uh, DOA Extreme have much of a competitive crowd, or is that? I don't is think so. Is, is, is the, the esports community? Yeah, in Geneva. yeah that's the, sort of like me. But no, not at Evo. I mean, Evo, like DOA, is not a huge is, thing. Is sexy yeah. volleyball a big thing at, at the I e-sports? mean, it's a big thing in Vegas, but just not at yeah. Evo itself. Yeah. <laughs> Behind yeah. closed doors. Yeah. And we thought they were going to announce Blanca uh, for the game, but instead yeah. they announced Dalton. Yep. Yeah, there were some leaks, and, and Ono was, was tweeting out some weird things with electric. Yeah, I think he threatened to electrocute someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Direction. So, Dawson's got a, kind of a new look here. He's got a beard. He's got a new look. Uh, Vince pointed out a couple of cool things he's able to do. He's able to uh, sort of hover in the air when he trans, uh, yep. transports, and then he can also like do this weird arcing fireball thing. Mm. Um, I feel like he's gone full like Stretch Armstrong, even more than he did back on Street Fighter, back in the early days when, when yeah. Dawson was around. Which um, I always love this character. He's my favorite character to kind of cheap cheat my way through the yeah, through sure. matches. Yeah, cheat to win. Uh, ono also announced that the 16th and final uh, release character uh, is going to be revealed at some point in the near future. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't really say if that's going to be a classic character or not. I mean, everyone's sort of been waiting for Blanca because that's, I think that might be the last original fighter who right. hasn't been in the game. Um, then they also revealed that, what was it, five characters are going to be coming to PlayStation 4 like after launch, within yeah. the six months after launch, and they showed their silhouettes and mm-hmm. Who it might be? Yeah. Well, Marty, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What was your big takeaway from Sony's conference today? Oh, geez. Um, They really leaned heavily into. They should like. You know, we've all been saying we needed to know more about what's going on in 2016 after Uncharted. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, We know Uncharted's coming up, but then it's like, well, what's actually happening with PlayStation VR? What games are we actually be playing in the fall? Well, theoretically, and I think we saw a lot of those with uh, with Horizon and with um, with Wild, and they really showed off. They showed off some more interesting VR things. I think like mm-hmm. I really liked what uh, that until dawn the the VR experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Rush, I thought, Rush of Blood. Yeah, Rush of Blood that takes place sort of on a roller coaster. I thought I, that was I cool. Think and it terrifying. was it was sort of their uh, them being like if you're buying a, a PlayStation Four this Christmas, uh, don't worry about just playing games this mm-hmm. fall. We we got you covered all next yeah. year, which I, a lot of the, a lot of developers aren't very good with. Yeah, you know? so which, it's cool to see that. Yeah, and they've already like they they began the show with like yeah we don't have a ton of exclusive stuff uh, this fall, but like we are the ones did leading they, heavily into Battlefront. Did they actually like mention that? Uh, so they didn't mention it. Word for word. <laughs> that was, when they were showing, like, this is what we have this fall, like, there, were, there weren't really any yeah. exclusives aside yeah. from, like, the Uncharted yeah. collection. Um, but they, you know, they showed Battlefront, which everyone wants to play, and, and AC Syndicate, which everyone's already mm-hmm. playing. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was cool to see what we're going to be playing next year. They didn't what? pop that exclusively on PS4 logo. Yeah, or, yeah, or, first, or on, first on PS4. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What did you think about Boundless? Oh, this looked really cool. That was one of those new like, game announcement. Yeah, that was a new game announcement. Um, that was one of those like I think I was writing a news story and someone was like, "You gotta look up. It's a Marty game." And yeah. I looked up and it was totally a Marty game. Yeah. Mad Marty game. Mad Marty. Game. Yeah, this. Uh, oh man, I really I was initially feeling it and then I kind of just lost interest very quickly. Why is that? It looks it looks very like it looks like uh, Minecraft with with a more kind of stringent sense of art direction. But mm. I'm not crazy about like the little alien guys you play as. They look very very like. Mega blocks to me. Yeah, I, mean, I thought they were cute looking. Like again, it's it was a I think a non-narrated trailer, so we didn't really know what was going on. But like the world looked really cool, and I'm a, I'm a sucker for sort of portally, interdimensionally things like this. Yeah, I mean I, I, I'm with Max in that I'm not wild about the art direction in the characters. Um, yeah. Some of them are really cool though. Like those are pretty cool. Yeah. But like this, the more humanoid characters, if that what you, so what you want to call yeah. that pink elk man that just ran by. <laughs> but uh, I, I like the idea. I, I, the the world itself looks kind of like a really cool Minecraft mod, which I'm okay yeah. with. Um, again, it's going to come down to how much player involvement there is mm-hmm. and how much I'm personally willing to create stuff in it. I got really into Minecraft for a while, so I could see myself losing myself into this a little bit. Yeah. But really, at the end of the day, I want to come home and, and just play a game that's finished. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. So but the, we'll it see. sort of it reminded me a little bit in a weird way of Proteus, which I know Max and I adore, and mm-hmm. in, in that it seems like a game, I've become a big fan of games that just allow me to jump into a space and explore it. Right. And sort of yeah. like, I don't I don't always need like friction and, and huge difficulty, which I love in like yeah. Bloodborne and Dark Souls, but sometimes I just want to, you know, relax and just wander around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that said, I, we don't know what the hell this game is no, about. No, not at all. You got don't a, know. It's, you've got a hammer, there's cubes, yeah. there's weird Maybe that was meowing I like the sort of paintings from Mario 64 they have that you can jump <laughs> yeah. in and go to different yeah. Levels, yeah, that's a cool idea. So I don't know if this was clear from the presentation, but it's a PS4 and PC cross-platform game huh. that oh, actually plays in the same universe. And the official description says, when you open a portal to a new world, you never know what, you, what you'll get. Sometimes you'll thrive, sometimes you'll have to fight to survive. When you find that world that you really like, uh, you can make it your official home and claim some land using a beacon. 
Interesting. Oh, I weird. feel like I'm gonna we're gonna walk through a lot of portals and see a lot of dongs. Yeah, that's usually dongs. what happens. If you give people in the video game world power to create, they make huge dongs. <laughs> so, so speaking of creating and that, that type of gameplay, uh, dreams. Yeah. Dreams, yeah. yeah. Dreams looks really cool. Looks also vaguely nightmarish. Yeah. You want to be a <laughs> weird uh, pig-headed girl woman who takes control of a giant rat in pants? Oh, yeah. That was, a, that was a bear. I, was you know, it, was I'm, it a bear? I think so. I'm oh, cautiously I'm optimistic about this one. I feel like these things never show well in the middle of one of these conferences. Yeah. Like, it's totally a record screeching kind of moment where like, I didn't know what was going on for a lot of it. And again, it's going to come down to what people make. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of these games, they turn out to be... Uh, sort of people are creating kind of inferior versions of games that I'm enjoying somewhere else. Yeah. You know, like they're like, here's a platformer, but it doesn't, it's not the best platformer. Here's a racing game. Like they, they showed this soccer game at one point that, that they had made. And like, is that going to be more fun than say like FIFA, FIFA is? Or, yeah. Um, so it's interesting. I, I love, I love this sort of watercolor look. I like some of the art stuff they're doing when they go noir and go to full black and white and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of cool creativity here. And yeah. the idea of all of it being built up from scratch on PS4 is is insane to me. Yeah, uh, I mean, Media Molecule is one of those developers that, like, even if I'm not super in love with, like, I think I appreciate Little Big Planet more than I like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas Tearaway, I, I absolutely adore as sure. a game. Uh, one thing I think that is that's just yeah, terrifying. It's coming you closer. Need to like it. Get back! It's trying. It's trying to kill us. Um, one thing that I think is really cool with this is, like I said, uh, a lot of games, you know, like uh, get out of here. Everything from Little Big Planet to Mario Maker, uh, yeah, there is yeah. a divide between play and creation. Yeah. yeah. Whereas with this, there is only the one. And so the whole thing is like, you're not just like, well, I'm gonna play, because it's as you are playing, you are remixing people's levels. So you are right. entering people's dreams, and you are fidgeting with them, and then the next person that enters is going to enter your remixed version of that. And good, so it's sort good of luck. Like, yeah. <laughs> welcome to my hell. Welcome to dogs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, that said, I'm, I'm really excited about this. So am I. I like to draw bears. This yeah. is like a thing that I, I think I could get into. You do like to draw bears. I draw bears true. a lot. They're pretty. They're pretty exciting. And yeah, I, yeah it's just uh, it doesn't. You can't demo this because it, it it relies entirely on a community to create stuff. But I mean, we are this generation of consoles is the first one that has launched with social media being. A part of our lives, yeah. you know. Like, I, and I, I feel like Little Big Planet kind of. When did that? When did that launch? When did the first one come out? Was it, it two thousand eight? I think. Yeah, that was uh, that was nineteen eighty one. That was still like the MySpace <laughs> yeah. years. You yeah, know? like yeah. things. We didn't have that kind of stuff where it was like, hey, check out this level that somebody made in this thing. Like, we weren't just all kind of sharing stuff constantly. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like most of the cool stuff that's come out of something like Little Big Planet has been, hey, somebody made a first person shooter using the you know customization here, which is insane. Yeah. And this is a game that seems to lean pretty heavily into that, but not. You know, yeah. No, the, you're you're right in that like social media plays a huge part in the discoverability in games like this now. Um, like it's one of the things Mario Maker suffered from was being able to actually find the best stuff there consistently. Mm -hmm. um, so things will get featured and get fluttered to the top more here. But I'm worried that this will just turn into people making World One One for Mario or making Contra or making Mario sixty four. Um, yeah. And in that in that way, it's kind of cool to see that sort of cover song aspect of it. But yeah. uh, I. If, it, if people turn this around and just make completely bizarre original things in it, which is obviously what this demo here is hinting at, uh, then I'll be pretty happy with it. Yeah, I, f I feel like, I don't know, from what I'm getting from this, you're making things that are less mechanically intensive and more of like cool places to wander around. So in that way, it almost right. feels like you're building, Minecraft. You're building dioramas, basically. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, which I'm sort of fine with. Theaters. Yeah. I mean, the, the Little Big Planet always had that, that kind of puppet show vibe to it. And then, you know, they did they do Puppeteer? Or was that, they that did was, not. Okay, no, it had a similar aesthetic. Yeah. But yeah. like, it's very much, it, you know, you could always kind of make Sackboy like kind of dance around and it sort of look like a little, little puppet. And it's, always, yeah. it's always had that very crafty vibe to it. And this seems like, yeah, you're building you're building dollhouses. You're making stuff in mm -hmm. a virtual space. And that's... That's fascinating. Why is that Lincoln? Why, <laughs> why is Lincoln there? <laughs> what are they doing in this morgue? <laughs> All right, now switching gears a little bit, uh, one of our viewers, that light skin guy, asks... <laughs> oh, that one. Are you, you know, the one. Are you guys disappointed you didn't get to see Final Fantasy VII Remake gameplay? No, because... I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting it. Um, yeah. I, don't th I, I think at, uh, at E3, that was their, hey, uh, we're going to make this less than, hey, we're making this. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the fact that, you know, I still think Final Fantasy XV is a ways off. I definitely think Kingdom Hearts 3 is a ways, ways off. And so I think that is 
far-flung future. Yeah, um, I think so too. So, yeah, I'm not disappointed. I'm stoked that it's happening um, because I mean, we've been wanting that to happen for 15 years. Yeah. On the pre-show, we talked about Final Fantasy VII, Shenmue Three, and Last Guardian, mm-hmm. and none of them were here today. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how much any of us really expected from any yeah. of them. I'd say E3 for most of those things. Yeah, I'd say E3 for Last Guardian. I would be shocked if we hear anything about the other two. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we got a release window for No Man's Sky. No yes. Man's Sky. At long last. We've yeah. narrowed the window down to a month-long window. Mm-hmm. A month and a year. Now, is it yeah. before or after E3? Because that makes a... I mean, that's... Yeah. So, yeah, the last couple of years... Problem, but... last oh, couple yeah, years have been big problem. for uh, pre-E3 games. Like, we've had uh, two years ago, we had... I guess it was two years ago, we had The Last of Us. Yeah, that was basically uh, the, the day we went to E3. Yeah, yeah, and then last year we had Witcher, and then right after E3 was Batman. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that's going to be an interesting yeah. window to see, like... I mean, are they going to do that weird, like, and it's out now thing? Yeah. Like they're gonna finally show it on stage. And I pulled up the dates here. E3 2016 is June 14th to 16th. Okay, so just smack dab yeah, in the middle. Right in the middle. Yeah. Oh, so we got yeah. 230 days and 23 hours left. That's cool. Don't say that. I have a, I'm <laughs> having a. Pa- I'm literally having a. Pa- hey, look at those cool veins in your foreheads. <laughs> um, one cool thing in that trailer, Rucker Howard was yeah, in the I video. Didn't, I didn't yeah. Even yeah. Set it first. I was, was kind of weird about that because they were doing a very obvious sort of, hey, it's a Blade Runner reference, but I don't know how I feel about like Blade Runner is very dark and broody and. It's my favorite movie, and mm-hmm. I yeah. sort of am cool with them doing something with that. They just felt sort of like a Shinx. kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was looking at that part and wondering if all the planet levels are gonna be randomly generated like QWERTY text yeah. like that, where it's just just <laughs> as the given to Belgium to Flart. I think with a lot of things, if you discover them, you might be able to name them. That's yeah, true. Right? This is, this is, I, I love these, this idea Welcome that there's... Welcome to Dong Town. <laughs> yeah. I love Dong Burn. I, I, I love Think this. bigger, Damon. Dong City. <laughs> Dong World. Dongopolis. Yeah. The idea that we Dong-topia. are in a universe where people, once this is out in the wild, people aren't going to be like, Welcome to Buttland. <laughs> the planet of butts. <laughs> I mean, luckily you can't make things in No Man's Sky, or it would just yeah, be yes. like, yeah, discover. Uh, what I mean, one of the interesting th- this is still sort of in that window where uh, PlayStation VR might be coming out, and this has been that game yep. where we keep thinking like, maybe this is going to be the launch, that killer yeah. app that mm-hmm. that PlayStation VR, that well, VR itself might need. We got some VR stuff to look at. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lots of VR stuff today. We mm-hmm. already mentioned uh, the uh, Until Dawn Rush of Blood. Yeah, spooky. Uh, which is going to be an on rails experience. That's going to be different from. The yeah, I mean, literally on rails yeah. on a roller coaster. Well, not really. You won't literally be on. Well, rails, you won't literally. Well, at, like the new definition of literally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think yeah. we're going to see something. <laughs> I think oh, VR horror experiences are going to be, at least for the kind of for the time being, they're going to be very static. Like yeah. they're going to be either on rails or sitting in one position. Mm-hmm. The Capcom demo they've had for PlayStation VR, the kitchen, you're sitting in a chair yeah. in the yeah. kitchen. That's terrifying. Um, <laughs> and it's scary enough just like that. Mm-hmm. But I think that to get people to actually kind of. Like it has to be sort of like a just a immersive movie because people aren't going to want to go into that world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like t- it's pretty terrifying when you've got a thing on your face. Yeah, people seem to really enjoy the uh, the demo for Robinson the Journey. Yeah, that was we From saw that uh, back in June. Uh, Crytek revealed it, but we didn't. It, they just said it was coming to VR, mm. uh, so we didn't know what it was coming to. But now we see that it's coming to PlayStation VR. Um, yeah, I mean Crytek's a super talented developer, and that was really cool. Like, dinosaurs. yeah, again, yeah. more dinosaurs, which I'm. You know, I'm totally fine with. Yeah. Um, it was it was gorgeous. I don't think it was um, actual gameplay footage. Just watching the way the camera was sort of mm-hmm. tracking around, but it's really cool. I don't know how we play it yet. If it's just a sort of like discovery adventure game, that's cool. Um, you've got this, you know, Peter Dinklage robot robot back. Yeah, it's uh, actually a Nolan North robot now. Oh, good. Yeah, he gets replaced <laughs> all the time, left and right. But yeah, we haven't seen this guy pick up a gun or anything like that. Uh, so we don't even know. I mean, I'm assuming there's going to be combat in this game. And yeah. not just yeah. so watching the, other dinosaurs die. The official description reads, In Robinson, you assume the role of a young boy who has crash-landed on a mysterious planet and must become a pioneer of sorts as you explore your surroundings, interact with the world around you, and discover amazing secrets. Oh, yeah. secrets. Real interesting to see. I mean, if, it, if you're playing as a young boy and there's dinosaurs, I assume they're probably going for a more all-ages approach than we're used to from Crytek, yeah. which I'm pretty curious about. Yeah. Not that I don't like blood and guts as much as the next guy, but, you know, this is... Yeah, and also, generally, games where you're playing as a young kid, you can't die in. Like, developers rarely have you play as a child who can die. Except, I guess, in spoilers. Are we going to be horribly let down (laughs) if, uh, if, you know, you are on rails for this? Like, if we're just being guided through this world by this little floaty thing, and maybe there's a few quick time events here and there, but... 
No, I mean, I think uh, too much freedom in a VR game, I mean, I don't know. Like, we don't know enough about exploring 3D spaces in VR to know right. what works and what doesn't and how much freedom is too much freedom. Well, that's where I'm kind of hesitant on VR because I'm, if, if, if these games are going to be available on PS4 and PlayStation VR, then it's if it's decidedly better on one side of it than the other. I mean, if you're just playing that in your television and you lose the 3D immersion and it's just this... Roll, you know, roller coaster through Dinosaur Town. That's kind of fun, but I mean, yeah. we had we had stuff like that in the '90s at arcades. You know, oh, yeah. take the roller coaster through Dong Town. Dong Town. <laughs> 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 now we did see one thing. Uh, this is the first instance of uh, hold for laughs. <laughs> Are you done? No. Are you done yet? Hold on. You gonna laugh about Dong Town Wait, some more? Hold on. Whole town full of dongs. You think that's funny, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> there's okay. one. There's one more in there. Got so it out. we've seen mostly kind of. Gaming related stuff for for PlayStation VR. We did get to see the the VR experience of Wire Walker. The, the walk, walk. yeah, yeah. Wire yeah. Walker, yeah. which yeah. is uh, I think really interesting. I I've been saying don't, this for don't a while. Ever see Wire Walker. <laughs> um, it's going to be using VR as sort of a, a supplement to an existing property or mm -hmm. a movie or something. Like yeah. We saw that that one that was climbing the wall in Game of Thrones, and they they blow fans oh, yeah. at you, and they had that at conventions. I which, saw one in New York that was uh, the the you know. Mission Impossible holding onto the side of the plane thing. Exactly. They put a huge jet in your face. Yeah. And then I they think kill they, you for real. I think that is a, a huge instance of, of, like, this is a practical application of VR as yeah. a marketing device. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you have this set up at the mall. Like, those those tubes you get in, and it's like, ride the tornado, and then go play the claw machine. Like, yep. it's... What tube is that? <laughs> go to the mall. Like, one of those things where it's like, it's a hurricane simulator. You like, And they blow jets of air at you. With the one with the dollars in it? Is that what you're talking about? No, cash grab no, not that. Grab the dollars. I mean, like, you go to, like, Universal City Walk or something, they have stuff like this every which way. It's like, have your picture taken next to a real football uniform or whatever. You know, people like to do goofy stuff like this. Uh, so I was watching this, and not to get too deep, but I think that one thing that could really come from this is that, that's kind of incredible is teaching people to overcome actual fears and phobias. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm, Maybe. I'm not really afraid of heights. I'm sort of vaguely afraid of heights. When I, I think there's no one in the world that can watch the trailers for the walk and not see the those angular shots of him looking down yep. and not being like, oh yeah, I got this. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, there's no confidence there for most people. So I think there's there's something there, and it's it's actually a really good way to sort of sell people on what this thing does before putting them into this immersive video games with yep. you know controllers and stuff like that. It's just say, hey, walk on a rope on the floor. Yeah, and like we've said, like the uh, VR is sort of one of those things that you need to actually experience in order to sort of believe. It's yeah. like hard to watch a video of VR and understand what it's actually like. And right. so if this does start showing up at movie theaters and at malls and at Best Buy and yeah. stuff like yeah. that, if you've never done it and you think it's nonsense. Maybe do Probably it. Try. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. go to your go to your local whatever store Apothecary. that has something you can put on your face. Mm -hmm. Still no price or release date. No. no PlayStation VR though. I think CES is a safe bet for that. Yep. Yep. Maybe PSX, but mm. yeah, yeah. PSX will be in December. Uh, CES is early January. Uh, I thought it was likely that Housemark might have something mm -hmm. to show here, and they uh, <laughs> unveiled a new game called Matterfall. Yeah, yeah. We don't know a ton about. It's interesting that they announced a new game before their new game. They is have out. another new game called Alienation. Alienation. That's not yeah. Right. yeah. Um, this is a and Super Stardust HD is still supposed to come to PS4. Oh, man. I thought they had like like Resogun was gorgeous. Yes. Tons of style to that. This felt like just like re like matter. It's even even the title seemed kind of like not really having its own identity. You're like this sort of carbon fiber robot guy with a gun for an arm, and you're jumping around shooting some crystalline stuff. Well, it looks like they're playing with the voxels again, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I, do, I did. I like the voxel stuff because it reminded me of uh, Resogun. But yeah, like the city and character designs just sort of feels like sci-fi. They're Just also playing with the, like a color mechanic. Like you are blue and the enemies are red. red. Yeah, and that's in the uh, the logo for the yeah. game too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, as as demonstrated by games like um, uh, Rocket League, like this could be an incredibly fun game. But mm -hmm. I feel like showing it off with a pre-rendered sort of more yeah, cinematic cut scene. Yeah, yeah. Cut scene is not really. Yeah, this, I mean, yeah. we also it's a very pretty FMV trailer they showed us. Today. Yeah, like, we, I needed I need to see how these things play. And know? we don't know if this is a top-down twin stick game like Dead Nation or like Alienation. Right. Is this a side game like Resogun? Is this not like either of them? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, but I'm, I wasn't I wasn't blown away. But can that. we? I think Max, you tweeted this out. There's certain words that need to be banished oh, from completely. video game titles. Yeah. Fall is one of them now. Yep. Fall, battle. Yeah, battle. battle uh, blood. Uh, there's a couple. Is dawn. It's one dong. Of them. Dong. <laughs> Until, Until dong. dong. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Dong. Dusk till dong. Yeah. Horizon <laughs> zero dong. There, to be fair, there probably are zero dongs in that game. No, I bet that there's at least a few dongs in that think game. So? Yeah. yeah. Cavemen pro probably walking just. Dong just the cavemen are all about just having that dong out. Speaking so early in the morning. <laughs> Speaking of Horizon Zero Video Dawn, game journalism. We did see a new uh, gameplay demo. 
for that one. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. So oh. that was uh, very cool. that was sort of a take on what we saw behind closed doors at E3, which uh, never, I don't think, got released uh, to the public. But um, it showcased, it was, it was interesting again because it was the same uh, game, like the same area, but it really showed me how sandboxy mm -hmm. it could be and how you can do all these different things and set up a bunch of cool traps and like really if you want to kill this single robo T-Rex, like there's a bunch of different ways to do it, which I really like. Oh man. It's yeah. real pretty. Uh, I like this is one of those frustrating games where I don't want to see any more of it in action. I just yeah. want to play it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I also like that it's an action RPG, yep. and there's loot elements yep. in it. Yep. And I like how there's cool things, like when you're fighting this dinosaur, like you can target a bunch of different things. Oh, we're not even targeting, but it's just like what you're aiming at, which I guess is literally targeting. Yeah. Um, but you can like knock off chest plates, and it makes this one area of his body uh, weaker, and you start attacking that, which I think is really cool. Um, and they have that part soon where I think uh, they sort of pause the game and then zoom out, and you see the scope of how the uh, of the size of the character com or your character compared to the dinosaur itself, and mm. the scope was just really good. Oh, I don't like that thing; it's scary. This game's gonna be scary. See, I was actually here. thinking the opposite thing that this game is basically just like a cybernetic version of a hunter going of, in the woods and just messing with everything. It's just, it's just, this it's, is... It's big game hunter. I was about yeah. to say, this <laughs> like game could be a calm. Cabela, future Cabela. Yeah, yeah this is future <laughs> Cabela. Yeah. Oh, right in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> really didn't like that. that yeah. Sad uh, reindeer. Marty, you're a big Bloodborne fan. I'm a big Bloodborne fan. Bloodborne the Old Hunters is yeah. coming out. We got a, just a short little trailer. Short trailer. It's coming out, uh, I think, November 24th. Yeah. Uh, the trailer showcases a lot of cool new weapons, which is something that Bloodborne didn't have a ton of weapons, but each one had mm -hmm. like a lot of personality and strategy to it. And um, I see you, there's a bunch of cool stuff in here. You got that stick with like a saw on it. Yeah, which I thought was really cool because Bloodborne to me was always about <laughs> picking, picking a weapon and then just really become, just getting, mastering you know, it. just mastering mm -hmm. it and having it narrowed down to just a few of those things. Uh, we did also get to see a new nightmare person horse creature yeah. in this, which yeah. is uh, one of their specialties. Yeah. Just disgusting, oh, wretched, terrible. Just hideous, calm, oh, yeah. old, white really, hair, really, really just bad. Wet and just I love that the, the I pubes, I think that it's was. It's really um, bad. It's, it's just so unsettling. Thing. And you can't wait to kill it. What is. Oh. Look at that. It's Whoa. so. It, it's head's not where like it's, it's uh, got like, really bad. And then it, the trailer ends with it just screaming at you. Yeah. It just screams at yeah. your face. Yeah. It's really upsetting. Yeah. Love um, that game. Absolutely <laughs> love it. <laughs> love that game. About it. Um, really smart timing on that too. I think uh, like Bloodborne came out at a really early time of the year, and so I think a lot of people may have forgotten how amazing it was after stuff like uh, Batman and Metal Gear yep. and, and Witcher. Uh, whereas now everyone's gonna be reminded. We're probably gonna get that Game of the Year edition by the end of the year, and so I think it's a smart final push to sort of close out the year of. Uh, yeah. Also, you look at just kind of. Time of year, we're coming up on Halloween. Uh, Christmas mm. is every, everything gets darker. You know, things are just kind of inherently spookier. And I yeah. feel like playing that game in the middle of June is sort of like, oh, it's nice out. Yeah. my friends yeah. are there's at the beach. And there's I'm glare from the sun out. Big horse rat. But this yeah. is a good kind of like, there the winter is out there. Christmas yeah. is oh, when I usually drag out my my seasonal horse people statuettes <laughs> and just adorn them all over the front of my <laughs> property. There's only one way to get over seasonal depression: it's by just putting down a horse horse yeah. beast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just yeah. cover it in teeth and hair. The Hounds of Winter. <laughs> we got to see Gravity Rush 2, mm -hmm. and uh, I think they introduced a new AI-controlled companion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That game's got real cool bosses, yeah. it's very pretty, and there's a lot of cats. Some yeah. kind of all yeah, so if, that, if they're looking yeah. for uh, bullets for the back of the box, that's, that's it right there. And now, yeah. is, this a, is this new? They've got the different styles? Like yeah, yeah different, the different styles of fighting. Which yeah. is really cool. Before, I, it was just kind of like gravity on or off, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, this game really does, like, it just opens up that world that Gravity Rush slash Gravity Days built on, uh, the, you know, at the launch of the Vita, and it sort of creates, it, it just expands everything. Like, the camera just zooms out, I mean, both literally and figuratively, the camera's just zooming out on this world and really giving us a much bigger play space. Yep. Yeah, I'm stoked. I never got to play uh, Gravity Rush, so. Yeah, I think a lot of people missed out on it, and so it's exciting that that's coming to PS4, uh, you know, in, in a little bit, and then we're gonna, you know, be able to prepare ourselves for this. Epic boss fights. Mm. Congrats, guys. Finally, a game with epic boss fights. Giant enemy crab. <laughs> uh, we got to see uh, the first trailer for the multiplayer in Uncharted 4. And Brian, mm -hmm. you were saying you liked all the supernatural elements that they're adding. Yeah, I think they've been like really weird and sort of like tucking that stuff to the side for so long. And they're just full on embracing it. Like, I mean, there was a scene in, what was it, Uncharted 2, where they're like, oh, it's a Yeti. And they're like, oh, it's just a guy in a costume. <laughs> but then there's like supernatural stuff just a few minutes later. Yeah. Uh, spoilers, I know Marty hasn't, hasn't played a ton of these, but. That's real review. Okay, I'm very sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, so, th th this stuff where you're basically just morphing in a different... It's weird to see, like, Sully running out there and just, like, <laughs> using supernatural powers and stuff like that. Yeah. Or Elena, I think, at one point t goes on fire. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, this is crazy. It's just really crazy to see yeah. all this stuff. Uh, the environments are gorgeous. Uh, this could be really fun. I've never been too big in a Uncharted multiplayer. This might be the thing that tips me over. Yeah, I mean, the Last of Us multiplayer was like a secret amazing thing about the game that I think a lot of people played the campaign and loved it and then never actually played the multiplayer. Right. Um, and I know a lot of the same designers are on this, and so, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It also just seems insane. Like, there's yeah. just explosions yeah. everywhere. It's, it's a really odd thing to show off this way mm -hmm. in that, like, this is... Visually impressive, but kind of all over. The it looks like a hyper realistic Team Fortress kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's lemurs on the wall there. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm into this. I just think this is a sort of weird way to show it off. Like showing off the cinematic side of multiplayer never really quite goes there. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think agree this with could that. be a ton of fun. I think it was like we were saying on the pre-show. There's a lot of single player stuff we've seen already in the same few environments, and with that multiplayer beta being part of the Uncharted collection, I think people want to know what they're actually buying into. That's just so ridiculous. I know. Having played those games, it's and, just like... Yeah, and this totem... Yeah, so we don't even know what's inside this thing, right? Just starts screaming and shooting evil. red stuff everywhere. There's a when, drum inside it. When they said oh. that Mystical was coming to the game, I thought it was a hit rapper Mystical. Mystical? Yeah. yeah. He, I don't I think he can, can be. because I think he's in jail, isn't he? That's right. You can still be in video games Thanks if you're in jail. Thanks for bringing us all down, Damon. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of bringing everyone down, uh, our viewers are uh, letting me know that Super Stardust HE is actually already on PS4. We did it! So, scoop! Yeah. No, <laughs> did Why didn't anybody let me know? Post scoop. And it's available right now. <laughs> it's been available since February. <laughs> <laughs> Since February. <laughs> uh, I think that pretty much wraps up everything from the conference today. I thought it was a really fun conference. Mm -hmm. Dipped yeah. a little bit during the Gran Turismo portion. Uh, yeah. yeah but, there's a little, but yeah, it went out a little long, along the teeth. Yeah, they did yeah. show off a lot of really fun games. and uh, Yeah, it was cool. I, I, it'll be interesting to see if they start doing a Paris Games Week show every year, or are they going to go back to doing every week? Every week. Every week. I mean, yeah, Paris Games yeah. Weekly. <laughs> uh, and we're going to have a ton of stuff. We have a lot of uh, really cool uh, appointments throughout the week that we're going to be able to deep dive into a lot of the games we yep. saw yep. Uh, today. So we'll have a ton more on that. Plus, Podcast Beyond. We'll yeah. be yeah. digging into that stuff even more. Yeah, it'll be going up uh, tomorrow, 1 o'clock Pacific time. So We did it. Yeah. I'm proud of us. Yeah. Paris is, a beautiful, is beautiful this time of year, guys. Yeah. I wish really... they'd let us go outside this one room. <laughs> There's complimentary croissants to, under the table. The joke to, is we're in San Francisco. We're not there. We're not there. They didn't send no. us there. Go to a brasserie. A brasserie? What's your yeah. language? This is a family nice. program. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, next up for Sunny will be a PlayStation Experience. Yeah, here right in, in our backyard. Yeah. yeah. That that's, we'll, we'll actually get to go to that. We're actually going to Paris for that. Yeah, we're, we're going to be live streaming from Paris. That, yeah. We screwed up our flights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks to everyone for uh, tuning in today. And uh, for much more on PlayStation and all things video games, stay tuned to IGN. Dong World.